So why aren't you going to bed right now? I'm just curious. It's 10 o'clock on the Eastern Standard Time. Why aren't you in bed? Time for bed. <laughs> it looks like uh, no RVers are live right now. So I just decided to pop up and see what is who who's interested in continuing to talk it looks like it's early for some people obviously in the central time zones in the mountain time zones in the uh west coast so what is happening i'm over here i need to go to bed soon to go to epcot tomorrow so why am i popping up i don't know because it looked like it was a good time to pop up. It looked like everybody was still revved up on Friday night. Hanging out. Not ready for bed. <laughs> so uh, Ron sees America raid. That's what I say. Ashley. <laughs> All right. You changed your name again. Robert's me. Ashley, my account got hacked. Can I be a moderator for you again? <laughs> oh, I'll think about that. Uh I I definitely um, have to think about that. I don't know if I can trust you, Ashley. I don't know. Um, we'll see. We'll see if you behave well. What are you doing tonight? What's going on? What's happening? What's going on for your weekend? What are you doing this weekend? Um, what are you doing uh, for Thanksgiving? What's going on next week on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? I am off the whole week so i got nine days off which was not scheduled but it just happened hey megan how are you thanks for popping in dyson's crazy adventure hello how are you doing with the uh little cartoon uh logo thingy i think about changing mine i'm doing netflix and dishes tonight what are you looking on Netflix? I just went to my storage trailer and pulled out. What did I pull out? Oh. Well, before I show you what I pulled out, let me show you what I bought. Yeah, I don't know if you saw this, Megan. Did you see this, Megan? Yeah, you saw this, right? You were asking me about it. Charcoal grill for 40 bucks at Home Depot. 41 and change and I can't wait to use it but I'm so busy that I haven't put it together yet hello Christina Dice's crazy adventure Christina hello how are you we've got seven in the house my goodness what are you guys doing you're not in bed yet I know it's early for you guys but later for me Oh, let's see. I am on the hunt for one now. Laugh out loud. Son says he will learn to use it. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it's one of those things to where it is work because you got to get the charcoal going, and charcoal is not cheap. Um, I would not, I would have not picked it up to use it with charcoal because charcoal is expensive nowadays. You know, anytime. Something is cheap and people go to use it because it's cheap. They raise the price. And then same thing like hamburger. Remember when ground beef was like dirt cheap? Now, since everybody is using ground beef, they raise the price. Supply and demand, I guess. So I'm going to Pikeville, Kentucky tomorrow. What are you going to do there in Pikeville, Kentucky, Ashley? I am under the weather laying in have to watching YouTube. I uh, hope you feel better. Um, let me pray for Christina right now. Right, Christina? Heavenly Father, I thank you for um, your many blessings. And I pray for Christina that you help her feel better and get stronger tonight. Even as we sit here together, that you would heal her and make her feel better. In Jesus' name, amen. I have about three pieces of brisket that need smoked. Well, it would be six in that size. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
like I was talking about bed, right? I got you. I kind of figured that's what you meant, Christina. Um, I have oak trees around here with with quite a bit of overgrowth in low hanging branches. So um, as of late, I have been pruning the lower branches, and I pruned several across the property and let them fall. And I brought over like three big branches and trimmed those up. And I'm trying to do it in stages and in increments. So I'm always having something drying out all the time. Uh, so I'll have firewood ready. So like I said before, I have increments of wood. So right now I have trimmed pieces ready to burn. I have trimmed pieces uh, that are drying and I have trimmed branches that are laying around drying also. And I have branches that I, um, cut off the branch off the tree and just let them drop and hang there till I make room to bring them over. So they're in the midst, they're in the middle of drying out, laying on the ground across the property. And I got more lower branches to trim, which is really nice. Uh, so as long as I don't go crazy, I'll always have something there to trim. Going to Hatfield and McCoy's site where they had a few. Wow, that sounds interesting. Got to get some video of that. We can get firewood. We can get, um, I, I hope so. They sell it all over the place. And pretty sure I have some charcoal too. I know charcoal is just expensive, man. It's just, it's just expensive. And I know it's very efficient and somewhat easy to use, but man, I don't want to pay for that. So what I did is I just bought some flavored chips, even though I don't think I need it because you can add seasoning to the, the meat. It's just, I'm, you know, the consumerism of our country is crazy to where we think we got to go buy everything and we don't. Um, so I try to calm down with that and not just buy everything. Like they got all these excellent smokers with temperature control and these little fans and drop in these pellets for flavor. I'm like, really? Do I really need all that? No, I don't. I don't even need, you know, hickory chips. I don't even need that. But I just, I found a cheap bag for eight bucks and I'm like, let me get that. And I'll see how it turns out. Uh, I'm going to do a live cooking video tomorrow. Oh, that sounds great, Ashley. I hope it goes well for you. I'll be at Epcot tomorrow in the rain. It's going to be raining tomorrow off and on. Laugh out loud. I don't normally use it. We burn brush limbs normally. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm in there in the store and they just jack the price up on things that didn't used to cost much. And it just is... I see it, you know, and they think you're stupid and you don't notice it. But man, they jack the prices up on things. Um, so I have, like I said, branches of oak. I'm cutting smaller branches. Now, I did spend money today on, like I said, the uh, smoker that I bought and a few hickory chips for like eight bucks, a bag of hickory chips. Um, I bought a little hand pruner pruner because the hand pruner I have is just worn out i was cutting branches and it was just flopping over and not really cutting and just pinching the branch so i'm like okay i'm gonna have to buy some pruners um and i probably abused them that's why they got weak i just decided to make a new youtube okay congratulations hmm okay got you I hope it goes well with you. So, yeah, I, you know, if you look at my Facebook, I don't know if you know, but I have a Facebook page, RV Weekends. And over here uh, on, on the side of my uh, RV, I do, like I said, staging areas for different branches and trimming them and getting them ready to dry out so I can have firewood. Um, so next week on Tuesday, I'm traveling uh, to go camping. So I want to have firewood. I won't have enough, but I want to have firewood for Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. So that's five nights. 
Now, hopefully my siblings will bring some firewood. We'll see. But I'm going to bring as much as I can in my truck. And I'm about an hour and a half away from where I'm going. It's crazy. Thinking about where I'm going, it's only about an hour and a half away. And where I went a week or two ago was two hours and 15 minutes away. And I almost drove back to get my kayak because they didn't tell us they canceled our kayaking trip till we got there. And I'm like, well, I didn't bring my kayak because I was going to rent kayaks. Whatever. Um, lesson learned. Lesson learned. So, Megan, what are you doing this weekend besides sitting at home and, and not doing anything? Are you going to do something? I mean, I'm, I'm thinking that's going to be my motto now. I'm going to start saying, just get out and do something. <laughs> get out and do something. Walk around the block. Walk up a hill. Something. Do something. Um, Cause sitting in the house is no way to live. I mean, that's not a way to live. Um, I don't mind relaxing and doing nothing, but man, I got to do something. So yeah, tomorrow I'm pumped. I just hope it doesn't rain too much in Orlando. Cause that's, you know, I'm going over there to Epcot. I haven't been to Epcot uh, since before COVID hit. I have not been there, so I'm excited about doing. I'm kind of bummed that I'm not an annual pass holder anymore, but at the same time, I didn't spend a bunch of money on the annual pass. And I'm pretty serious about doing annual pass for Universal Studios Orlando. Uh, I haven't been to Universal Studios in over 20 years, I would think, around 20 years. So I'm kind of looking forward to that. But also, I'm considering doing the uh, RV tech class on learning how to repair RVs. Uh, you know, electro electrical issues, relays, fuses, uh, refrigerators, all that. I'm looking to, to go to school for that and start a side business of repairing RVs. Because um, there's definitely a demand for that. So... I think it would be very lucrative to do on the side because um, where I'm at, I Googled mobile RV tech and there's none here. <clears throat> hey, James Cantonese, how are you? Thank you for popping in. I hope you're doing well, my friend. I hope you get better and better every day. <clears throat> I'm catching up on dishes and when those get caught up, I need to do laundry, but I have a car without shuffling it with a sun so might ccx run up to eagle lake over the grotto cool that would be awesome that would be great um mm. i'm a black and white issue guy so to me Black and white issues are easy to resolve. They might not be the most caring way to resolve issues, but that's kind of how I roll. Probably why I'm single. Um, I wish I can do something. I can chase nurses around. I wish whole in leg bummer. No chasing yet. I'll just drop in saying hi. Have a nice weekend. Thank you, Jam Cantonese. I didn't mean to put a bummer on your weekend. I'm merely talking about people who choose not to do anything, not people that can't do anything. So I apologize for that. Um, he's so far, everything seems to be doing okay. I think James says, yeah, it was okay. Life is difficult. Sorry to say life is. So, um, and also I shared, I shared um, a model. I have, I have several models, but this is one of my monster trucks. Yeah, I drove it today. It's dirty. I didn't I didn't drive it to the mud because mud is an enemy of radio control cars, all those mechanical parts. It's not good to get mud all over your vehicle. 
I drove it in the dirt. And just for a point of reference, this is the one of the batteries, 11.1 volts, the 5200 milliamp lithium battery. And it's a 50C rating, so it's two times charge rate, which is really pretty cool. And I have two of them. That truck runs on two batteries. So it runs on 22.2 volts maximum. So it's pretty fast. It can do a standing back flip on the pavement. Pretty radical. Of course, it costs a lot of money. Now, I paid for that a long time ago. Um, thank you, James. I have several models. Um, I broke out some airplanes the other day and got invited to a indoor airplane flying group. Um, the problem is it's about, it's a long ways away. It's about 45 minute drive to go. And they have an indoor, they have a gymnasium that they fly these smaller airplanes. And I have, several small airplanes that I can fly. Um, I was flying here the other day at dusk and man, the mosquitoes came out and attacked me. It was bad. Now I'm lost. Sharing car was not a gray thing for me. I am a homebody. I am not a morning person and it would be twice the gas to take him and pick him up from the career center. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm. Do you have a jet plane? No, that is definitely next on my list. I had a small jet long time ago, very small, and it was not hobby grade. These are hobby grade things. They're really high performance. Um, but yes, that is next on my radar to get. Not a true jet engine, but an what they call inducted fan. So it's like a jet ski, um, but it's a fan. It's not a jet, actual jet motor. He's gaining confidence in his ability to adult. Wasn't his fault. We were originally down to the one car. I didn't know his dad and reader or was willing to help should have let him fix the kid car. Yeah. couple of months ago yeah um yeah it's tough man raising kids is tough nowadays i wouldn't want to be doing it because the you know because the media and school are against the adults they want the kids to do whatever they want and unfortunately that our country suffers because of it um i saw a little skit that said imagine if we had a war right now and we drafted kids to go to war they would run not all of them, but most of them would run because they don't have an idea of what it would be like to be invaded. If we were invaded, we wouldn't have anybody to fight. All the adults would be fighting. The kids would be running and hiding, trying to play video games and think it's a joke. I mean, we are this far away from being invaded if we have this weak government. Anyway, now I have a song struck stuck in my head, but I don't remember the name of it. Well, that doesn't help me. I want to sing it. Hope you are quick recovery, James. Yes, I hope so too. So if you didn't uh, get a chance to watch the raid parade, check it out. It was a lot of fun. Um, all different types of channels were there. Um, it's growing and Megan, maybe we're going to have to maybe consider shortening the videos for if we get so many people in there might consider shortening the videos um, to get more people in in a shorter time span because um, two hours is a long time for some people. Uh, thank you. Going, I be in here a while, even Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Question. A lot of kids are so desensitized to it, they wouldn't care. Right. They wouldn't care. Be and the sad thing is, by the time they realize what they didn't defend, it will be too late. 
That's the problem. We don't teach history. I'm thankful I, I learned history. I learned about World War I, World War II. Um, I didn't learn about the Korean War um, and Vietnam a little bit. I know a little bit more about Vietnam. Um, and, of course, the Gulf Wars and all that was just a joke. It's sad. People died for it. Uh, and, I, and I don't blame our military. I blame our leaders, obviously. Um, we really need to reduce this government. The sad thing is government is throwing money away and they don't even know where it's going or why they're sending it. And that's a whole, that's the perfect sign of government is too big. When you don't know why we're sending money over there. Well, we promised to send it to them for back in whatever. And now it's going over there. We need to revamp the whole place because instead of raising taxes, how about cut spending? That would be an easy solution. Cut the spending and we won't have to raise taxes. It has to do with a jet plane. Laugh out loud. It's an old song. I'm leaving on a jet plane. Don't know if I'll be back again. Something like that. Is that what it was? Uh, I don't remember the rest of it. Got it. I, I hope that was it. I probably, you know... This, the problem with StreamYard is it's delayed, right? It's delayed. Why can't we... I mean, I guess we can't complain for free what we get for free. But why can't it be like right up on timing? Okay, see? I'm, I'm getting... All right. No, I'm saying they are desensitized. They are desensitized to the fighting. They would join. They don't teach them history well here. My best history year was seventh grade with Mr. Bobby Leon Thompson, a Confederate Civil War reenactor. Ah, I got you. Totally. Laugh out loud. Totally it. Yeah, I mean, all you got to do is read the document called um, the, the, the uh, Constitution and the Declaration of Independence. I actually have it right over here. I have a copy of our Declaration of Independence. Um, and they were all uh, empowered with uh, by our creator for inalienable rights, the right to happiness, um, the pursuit of, uh, uh, where is it, life, happiness and all that anyway the point being is the government is, is not supposed to provide us with a way to live we're supposed to work hard and get it ourselves um, hey it's the reef robber long time no see man how's fishing going i know you're fishing all the time man thanks for popping in we would call him bobby leon if we could say it in one syllable <laughs> but that was <laughs> right on Gold Green Mom, what kids need do sit talk to vets about war? Yeah, but they won't believe it was real. I agree, James, but they won't believe it was real. They'll think it's a story. Um, what they don't understand, they did make them read the Constitution, didn't explain it or discuss it. Um, the problem is they don't think it could happen to them. It's just like anything, driving fast, driving drunk, doing drugs, playing with matches, all this. They don't think the travesty could happen to them. Um, they don't think the that people could invade our country and just do like Red Dawn. Remember that movie, Red Dawn? They did make the... Re oh, yeah, I read that. Sorry. Fishing is over for the year. Ocean is angry this time of year. Right. I got you. What about lakes? Lakes and rivers. I'm going camping uh, next week. It's Tuesday. I'm heading over uh, to the uh, St. Augustine, Florida. Thank God I'm only about an hour and a half away. Um, and they surprised me by giving me Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday off next week. Paid, so... 
I'm pumped about that. So, um, lakes aren't frozen yet. I hope not. It's not December yet. I don't fish much in the winter. I hunt Nutria for my videos in the wintertime. I hunt Nutria. What's Nutria? Oh, by the way, if you want to come up on the vi on the uh, video screen, Megan, here's the link. Hey, it's Karen. Hello, Karen. How are you? Hope you're doing well in Canada. How's the weather? Ah, uh, it's a huge rat. Wow. Okay. My security camera has been going off every uh, every night, except last night. I got first there was a cat, which is cool. Cats are cool. They they eat mice. Um, I've only I've had one mouse in my RV and killed it and got rid of it. Uh, you want to see the picture? No, Megan doesn't want to see the picture. I got a mouse in a mouse trap. Caught him. Um, and I haven't had an issue since, but there's a cat, a couple cats roaming around. And I made the mistake of throwing like um, sea, seafood shavings or like the shell of a lobster tail out here in my fire, but didn't burn it. And then I get little cats coming around. And then next was raccoons sitting off my uh, security cameras, raccoons, a whole family of them. And then you got a cat and a raccoon, and the cat goes, Wah! stands up on his hind legs. I got it on video. And the raccoons are like, what are you getting all riled up about? And the cat walks away. Uh, and then I had a little bunny rabbit coming around uh, the other night. Kind of scared me because I'm like, is that a rat? But then I figured it out. It's a bunny rabbit. Swamp rat looks just like a beaver with a rat tail. Okay. That's pretty wicked. Is there a difference between Nutria and muskrats? Good question. All right, there's the link. If anybody's going to come on screen, please co-star with me, co-host with me. So I don't have to do all the talking and get hoarse. I already did one live. And Megan, please make a note. Saturday's my last live on Saturday night. So you can take me off the schedule for Saturday night. Hope cats don't kill the bunny. They scream when they are in a fight dying. Um, I hope not. I opened my RV door just a little while ago and put on my big light and the bunny went running. So. Yeah, the sea's angry now for sure. The reef robber. Yeah, it is. It's that time of year. As a matter of fact, I got scuba certified twice in uh, the winter time because it was cheaper because nobody wants to do it in the winter because the angry ocean. So, yeah, I got scuba certified, then advanced open water certified. And I was one level away from me uh, dive medic which I did not pursue. Only got gas, still no headphones. What do you need to get those headphones, Megan? I'm going to check with you and see what do you need. Let me get on my computer. I'll come up for a bit. Okay, cool. Hi, Tracy. You can come in too. Come on. Come on, ladies. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. Men, come up on screen. Ladies, come up on screen. I know. What am I doing here? Why am I here? Because I'm a party animal sometimes. I get rowdy. I got nine days off paid. Pay. Yeah, well, five days paid. The weekends aren't paid. Um, mm, I don't know. 
Karen says, hi, Tracy. Hi, Brene. Hi, Karen. How's the weather, Karen, in Canada where you're at? How is it going? Us, you know, United States people, we're not, mo a lot of us aren't aware of the weather in Canada. We think because the weather gets bad here um, that it's got to be severe there. So we're always curious. I'm speaking for myself, but I would know there's a lot of United States Americans uh that would be curious about your weather and how it is. So, um, how are you doing? Green grass and sunny days. Praise God. Thank you for that. Thank you. Green grass and sunny days. Green grass for now, right? Does your grass, is it freeze tolerant? All right, we have a visitor. We have, we have a green grass for now, right? All right, there. What's going on? I have to, I need to mute my. Yeah, wherever you're watching me from, you just mute that and you'll be good. Fairy Dust says, I went on a topless live, then into a land down under, and you're kicking back, so there you go. I'm kicking back. Yes, I am. Look at me. There, that works. Yes, but you sound like you're like muffled a little bit, but yes, it works. I don't know why I'd be muffled, but... Oh, there you go. Maybe it's just a sound wave effect. <clears throat> so, tell us your name and tell us all about your channel. Can you read it? Earl? Yeah, that's it. All right. And my channel is mostly fishing on the ocean. I do a lot of ocean fishing in the summertime. But in the uh, in the winter time, it rains here most of the time in the winter time, so I don't really go out and go fishing much. So I go out and hunt those nutria instead. They're an invasive species that were brought in for the fur trade, and when the fur market crashed, they just turned them loose instead of killing them all, and they are a uh, huge nuisance <clears throat> right i mean that sounds like what happens in florida you know people come in and bring exotic pets and then they let them loose in the environment and they thrive and and the ecosystem is thrown off because one whatever it is whether it be a, a burmese python or iguana or a bearded dragon or whatever they come and they dominate another species that was not meant to be dominated and it messes up the whole ecosystem. Exactly. Yep. And these, these things around here, they, they are a semi aquatic animal. So they're, they swim in the water, they burrow just like a muskrat does and they eat vegetables. I mean like grass, whatever in uh, wetlands. I know, um, Louisiana has a lot of them and they destroy wetlands. They will eat the wetland grass, the marsh grass down low enough that it actually kills the roots and then it sinks and then you don't have your wetland anymore. So <clears throat> it sounds similar to, um, and I say this from experience, I've had hens. And if you don't have a big enough area for your hens, they'll kill the yep. lawn. Yep. Because they'll just rip the you know, same thing with a horse or a cow or whatever. Not enough land. They just kill off all the grass. So um, I just shot a, I just aired a video uh, today, a premiere, and it kind of reviewed my last premiere video that had, I was in the Florida Keys 
and they got an invasion of iguanas that are evasive. And yeah. so, so they're eating up all the plant life that thrives there and they're climbing trees and pooping down on everything that is just unpleasant for them to yeah. deal with now. So Prairie Life, I see that you said hi. Um, good to meet you too. Um, yeah, I don't fish for walleye or pickerel or northern pikes or wait, northern lakes, pure and clean. Okay. And also um, going green mom. Um, they are, they look about exactly like a muskrat, except they have yellow teeth and they are bigger than a muskrat. They are <clears throat> most of the ones. <clears throat> Most of the ones that we hunt, let me find a picture here. I don't know if it'll show up on the on the uh, screen or not. Yeah, you, yeah. You or you can just go. Uh, the closer you get, the better it gets. Probably the closer you get, the better it'll get. There you go. There's two of them. Yeah, and those are decent sized ones. I have a video here. Here's a video of a huge one. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, that's a, that's a big one. <clears throat> so they can get almost as big as beaver, but they have a rat tail. <clears throat> and, you know, you can share out your, if you have pictures or video on your laptop, you can share that on the screen with us also. Uh, those are probably on, I don't know how to do that though. It says. What you have to do is pull up your photos or wherever you have that file, you open it to your desktop. Then you, uh, drag it a little bit off to the side to where you can click between both. Right. And, and you can share out. As long as it's open, you click on share and then you share either whatever it is, a video file or a screen oh, share, gotcha. probably a screen share. And you click again, another window pops up, says screen sharing tips. You hit screen share and then you select window or Chrome tab and it would be window to, okay. to share out uh, what's already on your desktop. Chrome tab would be something in your tab, like another YouTube channel. Got you. All right. Um, Prairie Life says you hunt them with a 22. I have before. I actually, I don't know if I have. I've hunted them with a 22 mag, and mostly I hunt them with a 17 HMR. The 17 HMR is deadly for those things, even more so than a 22 mag, which is surprising because the 22 mag is actually bigger. But I'm looking for I'm looking for my little clip where I show the iguana. Uh, oh, those iguanas get huge. Yeah, those I actually have I actually have a clip of a really big iguana climbing a chain link fence. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Let's see here. I I'm, I got on my. I'm gonna try to get it queued up here bike and went for a workout let's see here as i was riding back on my bike i came across this unwelcome i'm looking for it right the second here iguanas are evasive here in the florida keys and they don't want them here so if you so feel led you let's can take here. care of business if you know what i mean they encourage you to get rid of these guys All right, it's, i'm it's Shouldn't oh i know why i'm, here I'm sharing out the wrong the thing here we go anyway i, I saw, saw first. first watch this an orange iguana jumping a fence. Incredible. Yeah, that was that was crazy. <laughs> and that's where we left off last time. So, uh, yeah, my I was, bike. Riding, I came I was across riding my bike around unwelcome the Florida Keys. And iguanas here, are evasive he was on here a bridge. in Florida Keys, and they don't want them here. So if you so feel led, you, you can, can take, take care of business, business if you know what I mean. <laughs> they encourage you to get rid of these guys. Shouldn't be here. They're destroying the environment. Anyway, I saw first. Watch this. An orange iguana yeah. jumping a fence. Incredible. Crazy. 
And that's where yeah, we yeah. left off last time, riding my bike back to Bahia. So the nutria here, you can shoot them, trap them. You can hunt them at night. You can, you, any way you can get rid of them, you can do it. So nobody. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say nobody has a problem with it, but. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, same thing with the keys, man. People run them over with the cars because they run out in the street all the time. Yeah, yeah. Matter of fact, one time I was, I think it was last year, I was in the Keys and I was heading to Key West. And before you get to Key West or right when you get to Key West, there's a split in the road and there's a traffic light. And I was coming up to the traffic light and it was red. So I slowed down and there was a four foot iguana just squished in the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I had a close encounter with a squished iguana at a red light. So going green, mom. This is a picture of a live nutria right before it died. But I honestly thought that one might be a muskrat. But after I showed mm -hmm. it, I, I could tell it was a nutria. They they do look quite similar, mm. especially the small ones. <clears throat> <laughs> Tracy says, never seen an orange iguana until your video today. <laughs> that's the males, isn't it? I really the, don't know about iguanas. I don't know I about think them. That's right. They <clears throat> the uh, more dominant ones get the brighter colors, I believe. I have no idea. I, that's the first time I ever seen one orange like that yeah um and i see quite a few riding my bike i mean that's one cool thing about riding your bike through the keys you just see so much more and i saw lots of little baby iguanas running around the sidewalks and stuff when i ride the bike um and some big ones and at the state park where i camp um you could catch them i mean there's a trick to it you can catch them uh and and get rid of them uh, and they're encouraged to do it. I know a guy that just hunts iguanas, and they eat them. Yeah, I'd like to try them. I tried Nutria. It's it's actually really, uh, it's not bad. I thought it was going to taste like chicken, but it didn't. <clears throat> I don't I know if it's like silverback or not, but the brighter the color, yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that works in iguanas. <clears throat> All I know is is uh, they eat up a lot of flowers and vegetation. Yeah, they do. They climb the trees and poop all over the place. It's pretty pretty bad from from what I hear. Let me Google why why iguanas are red. Oh, the good thing is they're not inside my RV when I'm camping down there. <laughs> Male iguanas develop an orange or orange red coloring as breeding season approaches. Ah. And some iguanas, the orange color may be diffused over the entire body. Now I'm not sure how to see the rest of it. But anyway, well, I don't know <clears throat> when their breeding season is, but when I shot that video, that was uh, September, the early September. Yeah, I don't know when it'd be either. Um, I'm from Oregon. All right, we got a lot of people from Oregon. Uh, Tra Tracy uh, Ocean Fire is from Oregon, I believe. Yeah. They follow me. I Very believe I in California. California. I don't know where Meg W is. Hello there, Meg W. How are you tonight? Thank you for coming back and saying hello. Yeah, he was looking for a date. <laughs> Evidently. <laughs> <clears throat> Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to put my email down there. If anybody wants to ask me a question, uh, off, off camera, um, or contact me for any reason, I always open up for camping 
people want to come visit, come on over. I know everybody's in different states and stuff, but still, you never know when people are visiting uh, in the area. I'm always welcome to ha have people come say hi. Um, yeah, looking for a date. That's funny. You're, you're Oregon from Wannabe, Oregon? Where's Wannabe, Oregon? That's a good question. Hey, Amy, how are you? Thank you for popping in, Amy. <clears throat> Let me check something here. Okay, cool. Going green, mom. Hi, Amy. Uh, well, yeah, I want to be Oregon. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe she was born there. I don't know. She's in California. Fairy Dust is from California. Oh, okay. But I don't know if she was born there. She's from Southern California, she says. Right. She's uh, San Bernardino Valley. Oh, okay. So Meg W is from Georgia. Well, you're not too far from me. I'm over here in Florida at the Space Coast where they launched the rockets. The place was rocking the other day. We had a couple of rocket launches go up. As a matter of fact, it was uh, Saturday. I took off on my scooter to catch a sunrise. And after the sun rose, there was a bunch of people gathering by the water's edge because where I live, there's an intercoastal waterway. And I got to watch the sunrise and they were taking out cameras and stuff. And next thing you know, they're like, oh, the rocket's going to go up in five minutes. And I'm like, I didn't even know. So we might as well take a video of that. So, uh, Earl, are you um, staying home for Thanksgiving or are you traveling? I think we will probably, if we go anywhere, it'll be to my folks' place up in Washington. But um, we were, we just did an unexpected trip back to Virginia for my brother-in-law's funeral. So, mm -hmm. we were going to go back there for Christmas, but I guess we won't be doing that now. Mm -hmm. But. I guess this so, way we saw a lot more family. <laughs> and even though it's not a a good thing to go, but yeah, we did see a lot of family. <clears throat> right. Um I am going camping and my sister and her husband are going also, and my brother and his wife are going also, to my knowledge. That's all that's going unless I have another brother who's going to drive over. We're only about an hour and a half away from where we're camping, um, where we all live. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know if anybody's driving up for just Thanksgiving, but that's what I'm doing. <clears throat> going to uh, St. Augustine uh, State Park there in St. Augustine right on the beach. So it's going to be really cool. So Fairy Dust says, I'm from San Gabriel Valley South of the Santa Santa." Anita racetracks. I don't know where all that is. I'm, I don't know much about California. Going green, mom. Who were you saying that about the Gulf of Mexico? Right. I don't, I don't know. I kind of was like, that was a lot to take in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I don't have an accent. I, I I actually grew up in Virginia though. That's probably what you're hearing. But I have been gone from Virginia longer than I lived there. So people still pick that up and I never did have a Virginia accent. <clears throat> yeah, it's not very pronounced so yeah i just talk different than most people do <laughs> it's not really a virginia accent but yeah anyway <clears throat> it's funny when you think about accents um my uh my son was about six years old when my his mom married another man and he was from like North Dakota or something. 
And every once in a while, I'll hear my son say about. Yeah. <laughs> you so betcha. He, he picked that up from his stepfather. <laughs> gotcha. You betcha. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I work with one of those guys. <laughs> <clears throat> <laughs> oh tracy tracy hmm not sure megan i got a peach butt maybe <laughs> okay what is a peach butt tell us what a peach butt is you got a picture i'm not, I'm not sure i even want to know <laughs> i want to see a peach butt well uh maybe uh megan can tell us what a peach butt is or show us a picture of a peach butt i want to see that <laughs> hmm. I'm the same way. Grew up in Tennessee, daughter of the Hoosiers, so I didn't have a southern accent, but I moved to Indiana and sound southern to them. Yeah. Oh, I love the Tennessee accent. Either the Tennessee or North Carolina got to be the best one in the U.S. Uh, I love, yeah, I love that southern drawl, and I, I, yeah, I love any, I love let you know Spanish, Hispanic accents, and all that stuff. Yeah. So is this the peach butt right here? That's not a good enough picture. <laughs> I want to see some real. Wait, wait, wait. There you go, fuzzy. <laughs> okay, I'll remember that. I'm going to remember that. <laughs> it takes all kinds. Hey, everybody, there's somebody. Everybody's attracted to somebody, right? <laughs> I, you know that's true because you wouldn't be seeing the way people dress and let other people are attracted to the way they dress because some of the way people dress, I'm like, I can't believe you're out in public like that. They or dress public. or undress? Pretty much whatever, yes. Half yeah. dressed, half dressed, you know, and I'm it goes both ways, you know. I don't know why anybody would be attracted to a man that has his shorts down below his butt. I don't get that. Um, but <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just maybe it's sense. just because they remind them to say no to crack. I really <laughs> don't. I don't know. It's weird, you know. It's weird how some things you didn't think would last long are lasting two decades. Yeah, <clears throat> crazy. <laughs> I hope not going green. I'm not. <laughs> Yeah, I got a fluorescent butt, too. Uh, this isn't turning into a topless live. No, it isn't. <laughs> no, I put my shirt on before I went on live. It was it was humid here in Florida. We, you know, we had like a stalled uh, warm front. It started moving forward up high up north and it stopped. And then we got all this rain and it just humidity and everything was just sticky. Nothing was evaporating. You know, in Florida, we're used to evaporation, but when this humid warm front stuck over us, it just got sticky. And it's like, man, I'm taking off all this clothes, got the fan running. I didn't want to, it was, the temperature wasn't hot. It was 75, right. but right. it was just humid, man. And the air conditioner is not going to kick on. It's just humid. Right. Yeah. I can't stand <laughs> that humidity anymore. <laughs> Megan W says shirts are appreciated in most cases. <laughs> oh my goodness. I saw a, a video. You know how these people do pranks on YouTube and sometimes they 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 superstar athletes will dress up like old people and then go out in the street and and challenge young guys and dominate them. Well, there was a guy, a football player, uh, who was a really good sprinter. And uh, he went out in the streets of Miami and was challenging people to foot races. But he had, you know, gray beard, wrinkly face and dressed with a cane and all that to make it look like he was really old. Next thing you know, people were like, yeah, man, I'll race you. And they were throwing money down. Anyway, they're in Miami. And this girl, I mean, let's just say she had uh, a lot of assets and she wasn't covering them up. And she went to race this guy. And she, you know how when people think they're faster than they are and they can't get their legs to move enough? Well, she did a face plant on the pavement, literally. Oh, and wow. 
And she, oh. yeah, it was it was ugly. And they gave her like two hundred bucks because it was a joke, right? And they yeah. felt bad. <laughs> so they gave her a couple hundred dollars in cash to pay for her medical bills that she face planted on the pavement. Hey, it's Hilda. Long time no see, Hilda. So what's the what's the true meaning of that? Of what? Uh, next comment down. You know what the true meaning of that is? Don't you wear the guys with their... Oh, yeah. It's it's uh, inmates in the prisons. When they wear their pants like that, that means they're available for other men to have sex with. That's where it started, in the prisons. And that's what blows me away. It's kind of like, why would you want to portray that in public? But it's beyond my understanding. I don't even try to understand it. All right. So do you got a video coming up sometime, Earl? Uh, just put one out Monday, just a recap of all my summer, not all my summer stuff. It was just a recap of some of the funner, more fun clips of the summer. And then, uh, next Monday, I'm going to put, uh, basically just a photo collage together of our, just snapshots from our trip back to Virginia and back. So. I yeah, was thinking, I don't really I, I have was thinking anything. of doing something like that with uh, sunrises and sunsets because I yeah. take a lot of those. And I I just posted one today, a short, like, three-minute video of out at the ocean at um, Heck It Ahead Lighthouse uh, Overlook on the ocean. It was pretty rough that day, and there were sea lions down there just playing yeah. around in the waves and stuff. So yeah. Here here uh let's see. I did a I did a uh live from Wabasso Beach near Sebastian Inlet last Saturday. I was on my scooter driving down the coast. And let me see here. Let me pull it up. The dude, the dude's skimboarding. He's killing, He's killing it. it. Got, got my hat on my scooter. scooter. Uh, I wish I was at the beach right up. I know, I know. That's why I'm here. I'm here. Cause it's nice. Cause it's nice. Well, I just took, well, I just took a ride, for a ride to, uh, to go uh, down, go the coast, down the coast of Florida. Of Florida. Of Florida. I'm, on I'm on A1A, right on A1A. Right A1A. And try and try do some exploring. Go to the treasure coast. There's coast. a big wave. There's a big wave. So yeah, I've for Florida, lie, that's I've a big wave. Uh, yeah, that's not big for here. That's about normal. Right. Well, we don't get any waves in Florida hardly. Sebastian, Sebastian Inlet to Long Point Campground, all the way up and down. Sorry, Megan. Thank you for telling me. I used to do that skimboard and stuff. Anyway, I stopped at a treasure museum, which was really cool. Got video of it. Yeah. She they says it's, it echoes when I do that. They had, they had an observation. Yeah, I think you have two browsers open or something when you do that. I love the beach, but not one close to you. Yeah, it's tough. There you go. I hear you. I don't go to the beach that often, but I do like it. Nice. Shredding on YouTube. Isn't that cool? So anyway, I got some. All right. I was just sharing a little bit of that. I shut my mic down so you can hear the uh, yeah. video mic. Yeah. So thank you, Megan, for pointing that out to me. I never know when it's what it's doing. So Megan, thank you. No, I don't like the echo. I don't. Uh, so Me Meg. Uh, w says, I like seeing the fish on your premiere. Well, let me let me show Earl that. Uh, I'll pull that one up because that was some un, some cool cool stuff happened during that uh, during that video. Hey guys, hey guys it's um, Rob. I was 
at my campsite, which was a waterfront campsite. Well, let me show Earl this little my catch here. To watch episodes. I'll turn down the mic on that. Uh, here we go. Lobsters. Yeah. They were just fresh out of the water, and they were feisty. <laughs> they, were, they were kicking. And now this was at my campsite right on the water's edge at night. I just went out and turned on my LED light. Yeah. And I... I saw lots of fish right on the water's edge and they were sleeping in the rocks, which was really cool. Yeah. Uh, let me move this forward here. Here's a little bit of that scenery. Uh, let me move it forward even more. Let me find a spot. That's one thing that's always in abundance is uh, sunsets and sunrises there. Yeah. Yeah. So where, which part of Florida are you in? I mean, you said the rocket. I'm on, I'm on the beach. Space Coast, uh, which is uh, just, it's the East Coast, straight east from Orlando. Okay, got you. So where, about Central. It's Central Florida. It's Cape, it's where near Cape Canaveral. Okay. Um, and I, I've been to Florida several times. I've, Mostly flown in and flown back out, but I did drive down to Naples one time, I believe it was. Yeah, that's quite a bit uh, south on the yeah. west coast. Yeah, it is. Yep. Yeah, I drive by there uh, going to the Keys. Not by there, but roads that go that direction heading to the Keys. Right. So this was my campsite, which was just amazing. So it's right on the water and it was high tide and uh, they had this little opening in the rocks in the jetty where uh, you could access the water real easy. And there was lots of fish right there. Um, some small, some a little larger. And then I had a, a surprise visitor come up all of a sudden when I was shooting this video. Oh yeah. Yeah. It's coming up here shortly. An eel. Yeah, a How green eel. That? that is neat. And he posed. He like stopped and went, "What yeah. are you doing here?" <laughs> he didn't pose. He just wanted to uh, <laughs> wanted to see what you were. That's all. <laughs> right. Well, if I was a predator, he would have been dead. Yeah, exactly. But look yeah. at that water. That's it's out there about fourteen feet deep or thirteen feet deep, right yeah. on the deep area there. Just. Just truly, we had four days of no wind. Um, it was spectacular. I'm trying to find a video clip. I don't know if it's on my computer or not. There's the uh, eel again. Yeah, just hanging out there. And I saw him the night before in the rocks, but I didn't, he didn't move. He was just laying there. And then uh -huh. I, went, I went underwater here. Here you can see some fish here in the distance. Oh, yeah. And uh, I went underwater, shoot some video, because Megan from Going Green Mom says, get some underwater footage of some fish. And I went, okay. So <laughs> I, go, I go get my uh, action camera and uh, hit the water. Let's see here. I'm trying to find the spot where I jump underwater. Here we go. That's pretty good, pretty good video for underwater. Of course, it's really, really clear too. Look at this. Yep. You should step on that and see what happens. No, no, no. 
<laughs> Believe it or not, I here's a another fish. Look at the camo on that fish. I think it's a grouper. I'm not sure. I don't know fish very well. Where is it? Oh, there. Yeah. Oh yeah. It was hiding in there. Wow. That's cool. And then these big angelfish, man, they are pretty, they're not afraid of you. Yeah. They are not afraid. Um, probably one of the videos that have tons of fish is my video of, and I'm going to get back to the chat before I go there. But my video of uh, Sombrero Reef, my pop, it's my most popular video where we're feeding the fish on the reef. Mm -hmm. And there's just, you know, a hundred fish under the boat eating out of your hand. Pretty impressive. Um, it doesn't always, but I think they changed something, the default settings a couple weeks ago. Roy mentioned it a couple days ago. I don't know what she's referring to. That's one thing about Florida. I should say the keys is the mosquitoes at night were crazy. Yeah, I've seen a lot worse, but it, it wasn't that bad. But it's more right at dusk and right at sunrise. The noceums and gnats are pretty strong. And then they, they slow down at night. Um, but they are there. And some areas are worse than others because when I went on the other side of the island, they were worse than they were at my campsite. You're welcome, Megan. It's my pleasure. I apparently passed the test, huh? Okay, thanks. <laughs> yeah, uh, uh, fairy dust was going to get in the water, but when she saw that eel, she went, nope. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> now, I was out... Um, the video I was trying to find, I went out at, uh, I think I left the house at 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning to go out and put the boat in the water. And mm -hmm. the dock that I go to, you have to, I mean, when the, when the halibut season is in and when the salmon fit is season is in and all that stuff, you have to be if you want to launch your boat in decent time, you have to be out there an hour before daylight and it gets light at four 30 around here. So anyway, I wow. could, I couldn't sleep. It was two o'clock. So I just got up and left and the people that were going with me, um, that day weren't getting out there till seven 30. I think it was seven or seven 30. So, I got my boat in in decent time and went out into the ocean, dropped the crab pots, and then I still had about 30 minutes, 45 minutes to fish before they got there. So I went out just to a real close reef there and yeah. was fishing all by myself. Had a phone attached to the side of the boat that was videoing toward the back of the boat. And I caught my biggest cabazon I've ever caught in my life. Um, it was uh, 28 inches long. And that's, cabazon don't get very long. They get fat or their their heads are huge. Here's a picture. Right. There's a picture of its head and fins. That's one picture of it. And then... There's one from the side. They are an ugly looking fish, but they're really, really, really uh, wow. good eating. And they fight like a catfish. I mean, they just pull. I pulled that one up from the bottom twice. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. <clears throat> Let me catch up on the chat here. Haha, -ha, that was a surprise. I expected eels deeper. Um, there ain't nothing deep in the keys. Everything's shallow in the keys.
Matter of fact, uh, Bahia Honda, I believe, is, is translated deep bay. It's the deepest bay. And I don't even think it's 25 feet deep there in the deepest parts. But I cannot say because I don't have a, a depth finder. Um, that is a bummer going green, Mom. I hear there's red toxic algae blooms that happen elsewhere. Yeah, it happens on the Gulf Coast also in Everglades areas around the, the Florida Peninsula with all the fertilizers and stuff dumping out in the ocean. That happens. People around here in the water, uh, these creatures were right smack there. Okay. Yeah, I got a queued up, uh, the reef uh, far fish queued up on my uh, video here. That thing looked like a dog head with fins, right? <laughs> <laughs> here we go. Uh, let's see here. So this is Sombrero Reef which is just east of Marathon, about five, seven miles off the coast. And they have That's a big, good size fish in there. Yeah, it's there, and grouper are frequent there too, and as well as sharks. Yeah. There, a guy actually got bit here um, at the reef. And I, this is probably why they get bit, because they're feeding them. Right, right. Uh, there's a couple of those that are pretty pretty good size though looks like yeah and they're not supposed to be doing that that was uh i wasn't doing it. i'm just videotaping here i am swimming uh, down to the bottom i'm about 25 foot deep here with my snorkel and mask And you got to yeah. you got to go down to get this kind of video. Look at this trumpet fish. Yeah. I'm not sure what that's called. Yeah. Yeah, I think the uh, East Coast has a lot more variety and species than what we do here on the West Coast, or at least here in Oregon. And that's a conch, a living conch. He yeah. Was moving till he was moving till he saw me, and then he stopped because there's yeah. his eyeball right there. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, that 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 was a beautiful day. The weather the weather was great. The water was calm, relative. Uh, I think we had about one foot sea, and it was beautiful. And then uh, we came into one of the old islands close by, uh, where it's real shallow, and that's a typical behavior. People drive their boats near the islands and they anchor and just hang out in the water and, you know, two foot of water, three foot yeah. of water. Yeah. It's just beautiful, magnificent. It really is. Yeah, I've never been to the Keys. I've been Miami and uh, Fort Lauderdale. Uh, I've driven up through, um, I guess, the West Coast. I've been in Pensacola. Um, Yeah. Yeah. Well, the keys, uh, it's just, it's just, it's a different vibe, man. As soon as you get into Key Largo, it's just a really totally different vibe. Um, and it's a cool vibe if you embrace it. No, yeah. hurry, no hurry to get nowhere. Don't even try it because, you know, you'll get, you'll get a ticket because there's cops all over the place. Um, and just take it easy and no reason to pass. You'll get there. There's only one road in and one road out. Just relax and enjoy the, the calm, uh, calm, uh, vibe. Now this is a moonrise. And that thing's moving. Yeah, it's, not, it's a time lapse. Yeah. I know. <laughs> yeah. That was with my phone, believe it or not. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty cool, though. Yeah, that's what's great about the Florida Keys. You know, you can on one island, you can wake up and do a sunrise or a moonrise and then yep. do a sunset or a moonset. Yep. I love it, man. I just I really enjoy <laughs> it, especially when the moon's not out. It's beautiful and clear and you can see all the. The stars, the Milky Way, satellites going by, 
it's trippy. It's really trippy. Yeah, my ice sister. Cream. No, go ahead. My, my sister um, had some pictures of the lunar eclipse last night. Right, and right. the stars, I'm sure she took them, took the pictures with her phone. But the stars, you could see just as clear. I mean, it was, it was a beautiful picture. I couldn't believe how they showed up. Yeah, the the new phones. Um, I'm very impressed with because I could never get good pictures of stars at night with the phone. And recently, I was in um, a place that was more swampy, and uh, there was not a lot of light pollution at all. And at night we go out listening for owls and things and you could just take a picture of the sky and see the stars. It was, it was crazy with the camera on the phone. Speaking of owls, you should look up one of my recent videos. Okay. Uh, there was a owl that was sitting out in the driveway, just right out here. Uh, I walked up within 10 yards of it. And video the thing. I filled the whole frame with nothing but owl. That thing was huge. I actually have a video on an owl in the daytime. <clears throat> I was. Uh, I'm looking at your channel right now. I'm looking it up. Um, do you know whereabouts? What the title is? About, or it's uh, great horned owl versus red tailed hawk. Is it fairly new? Oh, here, I see it. I see it. <clears throat> I got to get through your commercial now. You got a commercial. Oh, man. That's all right. That's, so that's, annoying. What, that's what happens. <laughs> I know. Go to go. the last Go to the last 30 seconds of it or something. Just that thing is amazing. Okay. Let's see. How long is the video? It's four yeah, minutes and 30. Long. Yeah. Wow. All right. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah, wow. I mean, it was it was close. And that's also in 4K. Beautiful. Wow. What a shot. Somebody told me that uh, it had to be a female because of its eyelashes. <laughs> so that's is that a horned owl? Yeah, a great horned owl. Right. And it's sitting on a red tailed hawk that it killed. That's impressive. Yeah, it's it's pretty pretty cool. I love those eyes. Yeah, it's like no big deal. Yeah, I know. It got a little bit. I mean, its eyes went a little faster when I was uh, <laughs> when I got too close or whatever. But yeah, right. Well, my video is not that good. <laughs> I I just happened. I mean. My wife actually saw it out there and wondered if it was a cat. And I looked out there and said, no, that's an owl. I got to grab the camera and went out and videoed it. Wow. That's, that's really I awesome. Up, I walked up about 10 yards from it and just stood there and videoed it. <clears throat> wow. Yeah. Well, my, my uh, encounter was I was kayaking on a spring river. And I uh, found like a little uh, little finger uh, trail, and I followed the trail, and it was so pretty. I just wanted to shoot some video, so I found a log that was like a tree, a down tree yeah. in the yeah. river, and I parked the kayak right on the log. And right when I parked it to get my camera out, here come an owl, and it like across the river about fifty. 60 70 feet across the river he lands on a branch yeah and, and i'm like what in the world is going on how is this happening right in front of me and in the middle of the day and next thing you know he dives down to the bank and it's about two and a half foot of grass can't see him but i see the grass ruffling around and then he flies up back on the branch i can't really tell what he's got in his mouth but it looks like a, a crawfish or something yeah yeah. And he's picking at it, eating at it. And then after about two minutes, he flies off. But, I mean, I was just astonished uh, that that happened right in front of me. Yeah. Because owls typically don't. They typically don't hunt in the daytime. Right. 
No, this one lives out here in the warehouse. I uh, I know it's out there because I get poop all over my boat. So I I actually thought it was gone though because um, there was one that got electrocuted out here on the electric pole, and I just I figured there was only one, but evidently there was two of them. Yeah, that happens here. Yeah, we have that issue too. I got pictures of squirrels barbecued on the power poles. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Tracy says she's winking. <laughs> she was. She was. If it was a she. <laughs> uh, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. My, I, I don't know if I want to show mine because it's not that good. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> let me see owls are, here. Owls are pretty cool though because you don't usually see them. I mean, a lot of people don't usually see them. I I see quite a few out here, um, like right at dusk, or if you're driving down the road around here, you you'll see them fly out of the ditch bank or whatever at night. Yeah, we got a lot of owls here. Um, if you don't know what you're looking for, you don't know what you see. Right. But I hear them every night here because when it's cool, I keep my screen door closed and my yeah. door open, and I can hear them calling yeah. uh, between each other. Let's see here. Let's see. I'm going to share this out here. So here's me parked on a log. And he came out of the bushes. Yeah. Is that a great horn owl? I don't know if it is. It might be a barred owl. We have more we have a lot of barred owls here. Yeah. I don't know much about owls. I just, I looked that one up before I uh, put that title on my video because I didn't want to look stupid and post something that it wasn't. <laughs> right. I'm I was assuming it was a great horned owl, but yeah, it looked just like the pictures on Google. Boy, now that thing didn't waste any time going down, did it? Mm-mm. The horned owl just has the ears with the, yeah. the feathers on the ears. Yeah. And the barred owls are predominant in Florida. And they have a unique call. Which they all do. Yeah. So what are you videoing with? Uh, just my iPhone. Okay. All right. I was, I was going to say it's a little better than a GoPro would be as far as zooming, that kind of thing. But, yeah, it looks like a crawfish or, or a, yeah, crawled head. It's a pretty big one, but. Yeah, it was pretty big. I was impressed. Matter of fact, I, I see it better with the video than I did with my naked eye. Yeah. Because that's a two times zoom. Yeah. That's the best I could do with my camera. I can do digital, but it gets, you know, pixelated. Yeah, night. You know what? That's, that's what I use for my hunting stuff. I don't, I use, I actually use a lot of uh, iPhone for um, on my boat fishing because you don't need a zoom for that. And right. it's easy because you're always carrying it. So, <clears throat> no, but this thing has uh, 30, 30 times clear image zoom, and then you can zoom it digital, digitally beyond that. Right. But I never do, or I hardly ever do. Right. You see how it gets a little grainy when I zoomed it. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool, though. Yeah. Yours is a little more cool than mine because 
it's actually doing something. Mine was just sitting there winking. I know, but yours was like really high quality. I mean, high. Yeah. That was actually with this camera. Right. And it, it's a 4K camera. So, yeah, I mean, it was, that's pretty high quality. Right. Best camera is the one in your hand. At the, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <clears throat> yeah, you know, I contemplated upgrading phones, but man, that's it's a thousand bucks. I know. I always buy uh, secondhand phones and uh, go hook them up to, or just keep them on my plan, but. So far, that's worked out pretty good for me. You can get them for, you can get a two-year-old phone or whatever for 300 bucks instead of buying a brand new one for a thousand. I mean, then I use them for another three or four years until they don't work anymore and then go get, get another second handle. Right. I'm looking, uh, I'm looking in my picks. My old pics, because I have a, I have a picture somewhere where I had a, a really big day catching lobsters to where you couldn't count them. There was just so many lobsters on on the dock. Um, just hit the jackpot, and it wasn't just me. It was oh, here we go. <clears throat> Let me bring that up here. Um, nope, that's not it. Let me stop that and do a different because that was that, that was one. the end of mine, I think. Or no, the end of your other one. You're right. Here we go. Oh yeah, that's a lot of lobsters. You yeah. can send me a couple of those. <laughs> that was a <laughs> couple years back. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, my brother. I even know what to do with them. My brother has a boat, so. <clears throat> yeah. I don't, I don't have a boat, so. I have one. I never thought I would, but I do now. I would love to have a boat. It's just. I just don't have a place to keep it. Actually, financially, at this moment, it's not in the cards, but. Um, I want to take care of the boat, so I don't have a place to protect it from the weather, and it just was, wasn't in the cards, so I don't have one. Yeah. So this is a lure that I make. It's nothing but lead really? and a hook. And wow. that's what the ling cod and a lot of times the cab is on will get caught on. That's a five ounce weight then i do two dropper loops above that and put like small plastics on there with that same size of hook mm -hmm. and catch uh sea bass and well rockfish whatever that type of stuff there's me and my brother in the keys yeah <laughs> got We're a few good ones there we're not twins, but same mom and dad. <laughs> you look like twins. Yeah, we're not all my, we all look alike. My brothers, people, there are four of us and everybody gets us mixed up all the time. What did I do before uh, going green, mom? Um, I had friends with boats that I'd either take out or go with them. I didn't, I actually didn't do a lot. I didn't do fishing much in the ocean. I would just go out into the bay and go crabbing. And then my boss wanted a bigger boat and he talked me into buying his old boat so that he could get a bigger boat so that his whole family could go along. 
on his boat. And then last fall, somewhere around, well, it was a little earlier in the fall, I think, than this. I'm not sure if it was or not. But anyway, I uh, ran across a boat that one of, the, one of the contractors that we sell metal to um, had a boat that was just sitting in his shop. And I stole the thing, basically. I mean, I got a smoking deal on the thing. Or else I'd still have that old uh, other boat. But I wouldn't be doing near what I'm doing now with that old boat. I don't think I would, anyway. I did some pretty crazy things with that old boat. But I don't. after a while, your luck runs out. <laughs> It was too small for the ocean, and I'd go in the ocean with it. <clears throat> I got a, uh, I got a, a little picture of a not hungry snake. Yeah. This was walking down a trail at night in the Keys. So he just he just ate either an iguana or a rat. It looked like probably. Yeah. Yeah. Good snake to have around. Definitely. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, let's see here. A couple more sunsets. This is what I'm talking about. I, I'm thinking I want to do a montage of sunsets. Yep. Right from the campsite. And here's me eating key lime pie, slice of key lime pie on a stick dipped in dark chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, is that even good? <laughs> it's, it's amazing. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> uh, I, got, I got two of them in my freezer right now. <laughs> Waiting. And I'm going to St. Augustine and there's a shop in St. Augustine where I can buy more. <laughs> and and I was I was doing a funny uh, video on how many different places can you eat key lime pie on a stick? Well, you can eat it on the porch, or you can eat at the marina, <laughs> or you can eat it at the beach. Oh well, yeah, <laughs> anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes I think I'm funny when I'm not, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, why, you say lead, why are you asking if lead poisoning is an issue uh because you made your lure out of lead i think i've never been poisoned by lead i poisoned the uh nutria with lead just don't eat it right <laughs> just don't eat it am i no, sharing I'm not, yes i'm, I'm not listen. sharing my lead either <laughs> listen <laughs> Let me let me let me say something here. I I don't know. People interpret things weird, but I always invite people to come hang out with me, right? But only one person does it. Rarely, really, one or two or three people ever come and visit. Now I've been in the I've been to San Augustine. I met with another YouTuber in San Augustine, and I went to the RV Super Show in Tampa. I met up some other YouTubers. And I always put it out there. Hey, you guys want to come hang out? Come hang out. Well, fairy dust comes, hangs out sometimes, you know, and I always put it out there. So any of you guys want to come hang out, come hang out. I'm not picking anybody. Just come and hang out. So why yeah. doesn't going, why doesn't going green mom come up? She's she, uh, I don't know. She sits down there in the chat and asks all kinds of questions. She could be up here doing the same thing. Yeah, Megan. That I always give her a little bit of, you know, uh, come on, girl, come on up. Let's see. If he's eating fish, laugh out loud. The fish aren't ingesting the lead. Exactly. <laughs> they pull the lure back out. <laughs> You're right. So Anyway, I always like to have people come by and say hi. 
Um, people talk about traveling through Florida and I say, Hey, come by, you can park your RV here for a day or two. Um, no issue. You've, you know, if you're tent camping, whatever you want to come by and hang out, we'll have a campfire. So, uh, fairy dust is one of the few that actually shows up. So it's always open for people to come hang out and, 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 and enjoy some campfire music, whatever, go to the beach watch a rocket launch, whatever you want. Uh, yeah, Hilda comes up. She definitely does. Hilda was up today. Um, but, you know, I always get all these, I don't have my makeup on. I'm in my pajamas and whatever. No headphones. No headphones. Exactly. Good one. Thank you for reminding me. Do I have headphones? Does he have headphones? No. No. You don't need headphones. No, yeah. no headphones. Only fourth or fifth time today. <laughs> well, hey, you missed out on a sale. Let me tell you about this sale. Now, now this is a lot of money for some of you, but these are three hundred dollar headphones, noise canceling. They were on sale for one hundred and forty nine dollars. We have a visitor. Ta da! <laughs> Hilda. <laughs> Wait, Hilda, you got what? your headphones on? No. See, she's up. No headphones. <laughs> That's not a good excuse. And I don't wear makeup, so. Yeah. You don't need makeup. Nobody needs makeup. You don't the only got thing to... I've ever worn uh, all the whole time I've been around is mascara and a little eyeshadow or a little blush. That's it. That's in a once in a blue moon. Oh, don't you look cool? I'm doing I'm doing that so I don't offend anybody. Because if I do this, I might offend somebody. <laughs> What's wrong with Ford? Why Stop would that it. offend anyone? Stop it. I love my Fords. Every vehicle I've ever owned has been a Ford. Yeah, well, I'm just saying that because some people start yapping about their I, I don't know any Chevy that don't have a taillight burnout, a bulb burnout. That happens <laughs> to every vehicle. doesn't matter not, what you own. Not my Ford. Never had a taillight burnout. <laughs> <laughs> well, you look at all them Chevys. Now you'll see them. Look at yeah. them Chevy trucks. They got burnt taillights, <laughs> especially 1995. <laughs> Check them out. <laughs> I yeah, own when one. Y were talking, when y'all were talking about fishing, I was like, I want to go. I want. I volunteer. I want to go. <laughs> <laughs> yes megan is making a point she does have issues because she buys these cheap junk phones and she gets these weird echoes when she tries to talk uh, oh yeah. yeah and there is an echo i, I have this it. headphones mm -hmm. my mic is in the uh headphone right here mine is too i'm telling you I bought these. These are these are Bose noise canceling, and they are worth every penny. They're just phenomenal, and I've had them for years. I wore out the foam. I literally had to reorder new foam <laughs> because I wore out the foam. They work so good. I've had them probably five, six, seven years. Well, I can't use those other ones. The little small ones you put in your ears. I can't use those. They I hurt my those. ears too much. I have those too, and I I use them because they're sports. And they can get wet. And when I was cutting grass, I used to cut grass. I have my own lawn care business. So I could put these in my ears and have, I had the, uh, you know, put these on. Yeah. And it keeps this noise out. But I could also answer the phone because I was taking phone calls while I was mowing lawns. So it worked. And I could play music. So it was really. Yeah. And those are. But they hurt those. my ears for some reason. Those little ones, they hurt. So I mm. use my big ones. I have a oh, set yeah. in my truck. I have three sets in the house. And I have one in my um, backpack I carry with me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Of headphones. Yeah. I wear. I like the. I like these. Um because um i have hearing loss so it helps me hear people on the phone better i used to have hearing loss until my eardrum right here got replaced mm. okay good 
And I also have a, a little Bose mini speaker. These are on sale too. They're really cheap. They're not super loud, but uh, they're durable. I mean, I carry this yeah. on the construction site and this is what I carry it in. I literally have a sock. I double up the sock and I carry it on the job site just like that. And whenever I'm going to listen to it, I pull it out of the sock and set it where, you know, it won't fall. I got a small round one. I got a little round one about this big. I can plug I can put YouTube music on it uh, with the YouTube. Mm -hmm. And I listen to it around here because I don't have a radio anymore. My little stereo broke. Right. Yeah, I bought a bit. I bought a Bluetooth speaker that can rock and roll really loud. So I have that one for in my RV or if I'm outside in the yard and I want to blast the music. Need to ask a question. Where did yeah. you shoot the deer at? You talking to me? That's a yeah. Virginia deer. That's a Virginia deer. The first one I ever killed with a black powder gun. I've been to West Virginia. Not West Virginia, you know, Virginia. I have, I have <laughs> family that live in Virginia and West yep. Virginia. Yeah. <clears throat> My dad's side of the family. I grew up in Amelia County, which is about thirty miles west of Richmond. Well, not anymore. It isn't that far west of Richmond, but it's about. Have you heard on of the outskirts now? Uh, oh, what is it called? Oh, Bristol. Yeah, I can't remember. Now I can't remember the name. Was. Huh? Bristol. Crystal. Bristol. 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 Is that what? You're, yeah. No, it's a. Uh, oh, my grandmother used to live there um, in Virginia. And the house is still standing. No windows, but it's still standing. <laughs> um, Bramwell? Uh, I've been gone from there for a long time, so I don't know a lot of the uh, I know places. it's a small town. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure uh, where... Where in Virginia do you know? No, I just remember driving through that big tunnel and driving these curvy big roads up the mountain and these deep cliffs. That's all I remember. <laughs> yeah, probably out in western Virginia somewhere. Yeah. We, okay, we I want to ask a question. Well, wait just what a is, minute. Hold, hold that okay. thought. Please. We have a visitor, Country Mama. Musing is here. What kind of shenanigans are going on here tonight? Well, now that you're <laughs> here, we can have lots of shenanigans, but you've got to come up on screen so we can have more <laughs> shenanigans. So we have two ladies and two guys. <laughs> what I was going to say is the tunnel with the big fence, is that the one to keep you in or to keep people out? I'm not sure. I'm not even sure which tunnel you're talking about. See, I have, that's a different part of Virginia than I've been in, I think. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's in West Virginia or Virginia. They got this big tunnel to go into West Virginia or Virginia that we used to drive through. And I kept asking my dad what the big fences were for to keep people in or to keep people out. <laughs> yeah. Because he grew up there in West Virginia. Probably both. Virginia. <clears throat> I'm going to put the link out here again for Mama musing so she could come up if she wants. I was in the basement but escaped. Well, sorry. <laughs> I didn't see you. What's in your basement? I got Robert, up from the, my, my table, and if you came in when I was up, I didn't see you. I was taking care of some business. Okay, Robert, what's in your basement? I don't have a basement. She escaped. There's no no basement in Florida. Well, there are some, but can you believe that? There no, are I'm talking about on here. I'm talking about on here. What's in your basement? Uh, only you guys. <laughs> well, only you said she guys. escaped, so 
She must have came in and left. So, Tracy, you got to come up. We got another visitor. We got DJ Morris family. What's going on, DJ? How are you? Long time no here. Nice to see you. You're and your wife, Amy, right? Ah, uh, here we go. We got a visitor. Hello. Hey, guys. Forgive me for looking a mess, man. You look beautiful. What are you talking about? Stop it. I've right, not been well. I'm sorry to hear. Um, If you have YouTube open, please close YouTube because I'm getting an echo. Stop it. Well. <laughs> That's so funny. And we got another visitor, Kathleen Klein. Hello. How are you, Kathleen? Kathleen, were you talking about your age the other day? How young you were? <laughs> my goodness. You're the you're a firecracker, Kathleen. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Um, I was doing this to try to make you guys feel better. <laughs> <laughs> oh, have you seen the hat? I saw it. I can't remember where. Where it has both sides. No. The front part is on both sides. I have seen that, but that was a long time ago. I've I seen it it. one of one of the uh, leaders for a singing group had one of those hats with a bill on both sides. And then up here it said, I'm their leader. Which way did they go? <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Uh, Kathleen <laughs> says, cold and wanting lobster. Well, come on down to Florida. It's lobster season. Oh, lobster's good. <laughs> Believe it or not, does anybody know how long lobster season is? It goes Probably six months. <laughs> it's nine months. Nine months. It goes from August sixth to March thirty first. But my favorite favorite thing is smoked salmon from Alaska. Nice. Well been just, there. I've been there, so I just, I just bought this. Cool. Oh, I have that. I I, uh, cool. I didn't want to jump in, you know, by spending a lot of money. So I saw this. This is a 14-inch little baby smoker. Mm -hmm. And it was only um, like 40 bucks. That's from not Weber. bad. So I want to, you know, I do cooking on my channel. So I'm always looking for things to shoot more video on. So... I bought some ribs and I want, you know, I want to slow cook my ribs, but I don't run, I want to, I don't want to run my toaster oven for two hours at 250 to 300 degrees. That's a lot of electricity. So I'm thinking yeah. I got oak trees around here and I kind of cut my own firewood. So why don't I just, you know, use oak branches and smoke my ribs on a oak fire? Why not? So that's what I'm going to try. Kathleen yeah. must be from my area too, or close by. Yeah, let's see here. She um, says she smoked salmon on the shore of the Columbia River. Well, I guess that wouldn't have to be close to me. There you go. That could be all the way up to the Canadian border or beyond, mm -hmm. I think. Smoked salmon. I did salmon on my channel. I cooked salmon on my channel. I didn't smoke it, though. Yeah, you I did didn't. the other day. You made some fish. I yeah, wasn't I sure did. Which I did flounder. Mmm, the flounder was... Yeah, good. that's what it was, flounder. Mm -hmm. Oh, we got a visitor. Another visitor. Uh-oh, fairy dust. Hello. Thank you for coming in, fairy dust. Hi, Hi fairy dust. Well, hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Well, thank you for that. Happy Friday to you. Far out. So now we're here partying with you, Robert. Now you're not alone. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Him and me are outnumbered, though. 
Now we are. I'm always <laughs> outnumbered by women. Always. <laughs> well, listen to him okay. complain. Yeah. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, it's a good thing for me, but it's a bad thing when women go, why do you always have women up all the time? You only have women on your panel. Well, it's not my fault. The guys are chicken, but now we do, now we got Earl up here. He's not chicken. <laughs> I've had Nate up. He's not chicken. <clears throat> now, now I just need Marshall to get up here someday. <laughs> So, yeah, Kathleen was telling her, us her age the other day. She's impressive, that girl. So How Kathleen old is she? 72, 74? Oh, she's you still know, young. Uh, Kathleen says, you can put ribs in a crock pot to pre-cook, then finish on the grill or in the oven. Thank you, Kathleen. Mm -hmm. You got a yeah. video on that? It's just... She's from Washington, she says. No, I'm, I'm from Oregon. Oregon. Did you see that? Wait, wait. Fairy Dussy? <laughs> what? <laughs> How does she spell oh, Fairy no. Dussy? Or do, is it Doocy? <laughs> like, like Fairy Doocy. Is it Musing Doocy? <laughs> you know how long I, I couldn't pronounce musing, Musing? Musings. I said it wrong, I don't know, for how long? Two weeks? He called me Country Mama Mussings for the longest Mus time. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say, I don't like English class very much. <laughs> That's funny. <clears throat> I know. It is funny. I can laugh at myself, you know. <laughs> Ooh, cool you cougar Kathleen. <laughs> That's from <laughs> Kathleen the Educated. That's right. We need somebody, an elder, to keep us in line. Come up here and whoop, give us a whooping. We need a good whooping. A slap upside the head. Okay. <laughs> You're on that side. Biscuit's slap so good, you slap, make you slap your mama. Slap your mama. <laughs> oh, my. She knows Grant's past too. Um, that's south of us about oh, what five hours? Somewhere down Brenda. there. Hello, Brenda. Wait, wait, wait. Kathleen says, Robert, you attract ladies like flies. Take that for what you will. That's what dead animals do. <laughs> <laughs> they attract oh my goodness. She said take that for what you will. I know. I'm hey, just Brenda, you got a new one in the house there. Oh, Brenda Baker, Kathleen Klein. Hey, Brenda Baker. How are you? Nice to see you. Thank you for being here. Look at that pose. Megan. She's like, she's like on the countryside with the pasture. So pretty. <laughs> Brenda Baker's good people. Look at that. That's so nice. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you. So awesome. But what about Moore's family? Is it Amy, or is it DJ? What is it? Hello, Morris family. How are you guys? Might just be D. Jamie. D. Jamie? <laughs> is that anything like the John Mustard? <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Tracy says we just got our horses back from the track in Grant's Pass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm checking that. So, you Robert, guys are... I don't ever want to hear you say that I never come up. Thank you. Please. Because you today you... I'm in my pajamas, <laughs> looking in the hot mess, and I still came yeah. up here to support you. So you don't, don't ever look say like I a hot don't. mess. You look like a hot this babe. Is a now mess. stop it. This is a mess. <laughs> You're not. I'm on Where a new medication, from? and it's just wiping me out. Well, you know what? If I ever complain, correct me, please. I am not above reproach. Please correct me. I'm just saying from this point forward, don't ever say I don't come up because I did this for you. Oh, <laughs> you're so sweet. Thank you. I'm sorry I wasn't in your live the other day. That's all right. <laughs> I haven't been in a lot of them lately, so we're good. Good. Well, thank Everybody's you very much good. for being here. So you where gotta, are you? You got to fix the hat, though. I'm just getting the giggles. 
Did you forget it was even up there? No, I just thought maybe you guys would be entertained by it. It, it <laughs> made me giggle quite a bit. <laughs> well, I, yeah, Brenda, I know, hon. Well, fairy dust came from a topless live, so at least we're not topless. Hey, Mussing, good- where are you from? <laughs> Who? Me? Mussings. Musings. Musings. Music. <laughs> he knows. <laughs> Iowa. In the chilly state of you're, Iowa oh, tonight. Okay. <clears throat> I just went right under you last week. Right that through happens. Missouri. <laughs> I mean, like that? <laughs> yeah, kind of, well, yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> it was 19 degrees here last night. Yeah, that's too cold. I think it was like 48 here. I think it's 37 right now. <clears throat> don't it's make gonna get colder me, over the night. Oh, don't make me pull up my app. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're getting rain, seventy degrees, and it feels like seventy degrees with the wind chill. It's rain. Kathleen, oh, that's too specific. I'm north. I'm just up by the Minnesota border. Oh, that's it cold. Rains here nine months out of the year. It is seventy six degrees here. <laughs> It's 60s, low 60, maybe 60, 59, and I'm freezing. I'm burning oh, up. Well, you're spoiled. <laughs> and I'm just right. Mary Dust is spoiled. No, I'm not spoiled. Yes, spoiled you are. Rock. California, is, <laughs> everybody in California is oh, spoiled. That's true. There's no weather here in California. That's right. So when I go to Florida and I'm in the middle of a hurricane or storm or something i'm gonna freak out i'm gonna freak out i've never felt that before so. yeah i've been through hurricanes i've been through earthquakes i've been through tornadoes uh all kinds of weather even beautiful tropical earthquakes and freezing shit. cold nothing yeah the freezing cold well i've been to hawaii been to alaska been to germany Um, on my bucket list is to go to China, um, Thailand, and a few other places in Canada. Um, Those are places I haven't been yet. My my bucket list, I'm so late in life through um, several hardships in relationships my goal is to get a piece of land and pay it off before I retire. That's my goal. Well, my goal is to go out in the woods in the middle of nowhere, build a nice cabin, live off the grid where no one knows where I'm at. Except for the rest of us. <laughs> That's debatable. That's debatable. <laughs> uh, but I'll let Earth. y'all know, but I won't tell you where. I'll just say, hey, this is where yeah. I'm at. This is the scenery. <laughs> yeah. That's all I'll do. My bucket list is to go to Iceland and stay in those glass igloos and watch the northern lights. Uh, They've got some cool. in Alaska, too. Cool. Now, we can see them here where I am because, I, like I was telling Kathleen, I'm, I'm real close to Minnesota. And on a clear night, when they're just right, we can drive out to the cornfields just on a rise, and we can see to the north of us, we can see the northern lights. But I don't I think it's in the northern like lights. We're going to be going to Iceland. Incredible. I got to wow. see them when I was in Alaska. And then my favorite part when I was there was the first time I've ever seen it a dog sled race. Mm, the and that dog. was cool. <laughs> We had a friend tried to teach me, but we had a cruise planned one time, and that was one of the uh, excursions I wanted to go on was to get off the ship and go to one of the camps where they had all of the Mm -hmm. dog sleds, where all of the dogs dogs were training, and they would take you on a tour. And then last minute, we changed our 25th anniversary trip from Alaska to Jamaica. I've never been there. I've heard it's real beautiful. It was. It was. I'll still do the Alaska trip. 
the only two states I haven't been in are Alaska and Hawaii. Hawaii is beautiful and tropical and fishing there on a boat out in the ocean is so cool. I bet. I bet. Especially when you're trying to catch something, you end up with a shark. <laughs> and then you have to let it go. Because yeah, I didn't I want it in the boat. Mm -mm. No. But I loved watching the whales and the dolphins when they now, swim up dolphins. by you. We have dolphins here. I see them occasionally when I'm out fishing. But yeah, I don't. There's actually a few sharks here too, but we rarely, I've never seen one. Um, I saw one hammerhead, one. hammerheads, um, long, they have long nose sharks. Um, I've seen different types in Hawaii. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one of the, the military hotel they have there, you just look down in the water, you'll see them. Yeah. Yeah. When you're on the uh, 14th floor, it's like you look down, it's like, oh, God, look at all the fish. And then you see sharks. <laughs> <laughs> and then you see people and a friend of mine, in the water and they don't even know. Yeah. Well, a friend of mine went uh, boogie boarding once on the North Shore of Hawaii. And um, it was a fin of a turtle and everybody thought it was a shark. And it was a turtle's fin in the air. Everybody yelled, shark, shark. <laughs> Go ahead, jump in there and see what happens. Ah. <laughs> oh, heck no. No, thank you. <laughs> oh, oh that's, a cute. that's a dolphin. Chasing the fish. Mm -hmm. Lunch. Wanting to eat the fish. Yeah. I saw some dolphins in North Carolina, or was it South Carolina? Probably in the water. Yeah, I was on the pier. We were on the pier, and I yeah. saw a bunch of them jumping up and down in the water. Trying to catch those fish. That was cute. The dolphin chasing the little fish. My husband and I were kayaking. Um in Mission Bay there in Southern California. And we got knocked out of our kayak. We're about in chest deep water. We hadn't gone Whoa. out yet. And somebody said, oh, cool. Look at that shark. And I looked over to my right and just a couple feet from me was a six foot shark just cruising along, but scared oh, the crap wow. out of me. And I in Mission Bay? Yeah. In San Diego? In I'm San sorry, Diego. Ginger. And I was trying to get back in the kayak and I couldn't get in. And our guide, because we were on this kayaking tour, he kept saying, it's a bottom feeder. It's a bottom feeder because it was a nurse shark. And I was screaming, my feet are on the bottom. My feet are on the bottom. <laughs> and I screamed. And my husband's shoving my big fat ass from the back. And the guide's pulling me from the other side. And I finally got in. And I couldn't even row for the rest of the trip because I had torn a ligament, a tendon. Oh. I tore a tendon in my elbow because oh, no. I was oh, wow. in such a panic. To get away from the right. shark because I don't care who you are. A shark is a shark is a shark. And if you're in the water and mm -hmm. you see a shark, you don't know whether it's predatory or not. And True. this guy kept saying, it's a nurse shark. It won't hurt you. And I'm like, were you close personal friends or something with this one? <laughs> and it's like, I'm an all-you-can-eat buffet here. And I just, I couldn't get back up into the kayak. It was a mess. I was 12 weeks off of work and everything. Kathleen, this is the truck I used to drive. I drove that one for five and a half years. Is that a big truck? Yeah, semi. That looks like a pretty big truck. That way. Trying to get it to. That it's way. prettier than what the picture shows. There oh, you I go. can see it better that way. Yeah. Looks good. Where all do you drive? I don't anymore. That was, uh, I quit that in 2017, but I just ran um, Oregon, Idaho, Washington. I did one trip back to Missouri and back, and that was about it. 
I went with my ex-husband in a big truck. We went um, to Chicago. I'll, I'll let Casey know, Brenda. I just showed that because she said she was in all 50 states in a when she drove truck. I didn't. Awesome. We didn't do all 50. We just did Indiana, Illinois, um, Ohio, Missouri, Tennessee. <laughs> we went through That's awesome. Virginia, West Virginia and Ohio. Yeah. But I hated the back roads with the big truck, the small little roads. Yeah. You know, that, that, that's, what, that's what's so cool about our elders that when we're teenagers, we don't really think about it until we become, you know, 30 or 40. And then we realize how much our elders have been through and what they've experienced and what Kathleen Klein is actually sharing right now, you know, it speaks to people that are older than us and, and the experiences that they have experienced is something that we would like to enjoy with them when they share their mm -hmm. story. And it's not a story. It's the, the, it's the life they led and it's truly uh, exciting to hear it. So I, I wasn't in here when she was saying how old she is. What is she? 95? 72 or 73. If I would remember correctly. <laughs> She's still young. <laughs> to me, yes. when you hit a hundred, then you're old. Yeah, it, seventy isn't near as old as it used to be. No, no, no. You're never too old. King Tut is old, but no. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Yeah, that's true. <clears throat> King Putts. <laughs> <laughs> She yeah. said she feels like 104. That was my truck number. Oh, wow. <laughs> you know, and, and Kathleen is bringing, you know, she's, she's, she's feeling appreciated and she should um, because that, that is a, re you know, I say it's a regret, but it's not like a conscious thing I didn't do. My grandmother died when I was like 13 or 14 so I wasn't at the age to where I thought about, she was born in like 1900 or 1901. And things I would love to ask her now were like, what was it like before there were cars? What was it yeah. like to see an airplane fly for the first time? You know, what was it wow. like, you know, to see these things that happened? Like kids now are seeing things happen uh, in front of them that their grandchildren were asked, you know, what was it like, you know, like s another simple thing. We had eight tracks in the seventies and then we had, mm -hmm. you know, we had CDs in the early eighties and, and then we had cell phones and then we had the internet and all these cool technical, technological advances that our grandkids. We had the phone with the 12 foot cord on it. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Some kids today don't even know what a phone is that's they plugged in the wall. Toilet. Yeah, they don't my know 30, how. My 32-year-old nephew asked us one time, what's an album? Like, what's a record? Hi, Tim. Ah. Hey, Tim. How are hey, you? Tim. Which yeah. Tim is that? I can't it's see the Mobang. It's Mobang. It's Mobang. Mobang. Hey, Mobang. How you doing? Mobang. That dude yeah. gets around, man. That dude yeah, gets really does. <clears throat> Hey, when you're a retired aircraft 1890. Mechanic, you know, you get you remember before the A track when before the A track when they had a box that had the reel to reel? Yeah. That's what they went into. Mm -hmm. Like in Mission Impossible. Yeah. Yes, Megan, but cars weren't everywhere. No, the mostly the rich had them back because then. That's what my, my grandparents grandmother was in me. Italy. My grandmother was in Italy, so I don't think they had cars in Italy. They started making cars in the United States, I believe, first, right? But anyway, no, the I point, think they had some. The point was, you know, <laughs> your grandparents have seen weirder things than we've seen, and mm -hmm. you know, going 
I mean, just think about the Industrial Revolution before the Industrial Revolution, how society was, you know, that kind of stuff. Listen, listen, my grandmother told me that I think it was her grandmother. She was down by the river washing clothes, gave birth to wow. her baby, and then wrapped the baby up in, I guess, cloth or something and put the baby in the back and then brought the laundry back to wherever they lived. True story. Yeah. They had the cloth diapers back then. Incredible. No, this was like, I guess, the what, either 1900 or I don't know, but it was my <laughs> grandmother's brother. I didn't well, from it. what I was told and learned that back then when people had kids, they tore sheets yeah, to make, right. uh, to cover up the baby's personals and, you know, keep them warm and stuff like that. But I bet you what like, Mary does wow. is talking about is just like, soap it up, <clears throat> scrub it, squat behind a rock, pop out a baby. Wrap it up in a sheet and tie it around your back and keep on scrubbing and take the hey, laundry on when you're done. Yep. My, my first baby wore cloth diapers. There was no disposable diapers. My two kids wore cloth diapers because they couldn't wear the uh, disposables because of the plastic. Yeah. They I mean, would break had, out in rashes. We had the cloth diapers and you just dump it out in the toilet and then you wash the, the, the diaper, the cloth diaper. Mm -hmm. All of us here. Wore the the diaper with the rubber pants pull up. Wasn't that cute? Wasn't that cute? <laughs> Safety pins poking us. Oh. Not yeah. all of us wore the little rubber pants. <laughs> okay. So you leaked. I was out allergic to the plastic. I was allergic to the plastic mm -hmm. thing. So you leaked Don't out down worry. your leg. Just no, no. Worry. In Europe, they had something else they used. Okay. Don't worry, guys. We'll all get back to it. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> well, it depends. <laughs> what do you want to do? Go back to the caveman time? <laughs> now we got a visitor here. We got Lisa from Yogi Hollow Farm. Hello, Lisa. thank you for coming in, Lisa. I was in. I was over at Lisa's live earlier today. Said hello. So thank you for coming in and saying hi, and thank you for watching my uh, video earlier. Thank you. Come on up. Water's we got, fine. We got. Yeah, we got room for one more. That's for sure. Because I'll go down. If another female down. comes up, the guys will be outnumbered. Well, yeah, and then I might have to leave. <laughs> I'll do, I do this. Like, wait a second. So all the I girls was going to say that they were outnumbered now, but I think that buck back there counts as a dude. So we were okay. We're missing one. Well, well, I guess Barry Duff ran Barry away. Dropped I dropped off. I was going to say I got three girls on top of two guys. That was going to be <gasps> my prank. I was going to prank that. <laughs> that was, that now it's gone. I can't I say that anymore. I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Shenanigans. I know. She's been out lived tonight. She says she's not going to be able to make it up. That's fine. Um, she's been talking all night. I'm sure. I have. I, yeah, she just had a two hour live. live. Mm -hmm. I did one hour and forty five minutes earlier today. Mm -hmm. so I can relate. And my Streamyard sent me an email. You're a Streamyard live machine. You know all that stuff. You're getting Fair says break is over. <laughs> <laughs> my stream yard keeps warning me I'm close to my free limit and I better buy a membership of course well there's restream I've never had that one pop up of course I hardly use stream yard I use YouTube <laughs> I'm still trying to learn how the to eggs, use aren't they frozen? It. I'm sorry I missed that I was asking Lisa if she just collected the eggs. Aren't they frozen where she's at? Oh, yeah. My eggs have That's been getting frozen. They, there. they freeze them. No, I'm just kidding. <clears throat> she's going to pass out and go to sleep, she says. I don't blame her, but I'm just partying with you guys because you guys are just like, how often does this happen? So I'm partying with you guys. <laughs> Not often. I won't be up too much longer. Yeah, I'm going to Epcot tomorrow. I'm waking up and going to Epcot. 
fun. For the food and the wine festival. I'm going to the feed store. Yeah. Hey, Ooh. that reminds me, the feed store reminds me where um, I work for a, a public schools and they let the luxury of being an employee of public schools and doing maintenance on facilities is you get to use the company vehicle, but you park the company vehicle at the closest school to your residence, the closest school to your residence. So at the closest school where I park, there's these little hens that would come out when I park the vehicle. <laughs> They would come out and, you know, buk, 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 you know, and I eventually I was throwing some peanuts to them. And then I went, why don't I buy some chicken feed? That's cheaper than peanuts. So I bought some chicken feed and I'm feeding them, you know, for months. And then all of a sudden the other day, no more hens. I don't know what happened. I don't know if it's because of the winter time or what, but now I got a bag of chicken feed and no hens to feed. It was butcher day. I was going to say if they processed them. Maybe. It was at a sc public school. Well, well they, they have probably FFA? short on food. <laughs> yeah. They do have free. a farm they've program been, like yeah. Future Farmers of America. They've been doing free lunches for long enough. It's time to cut some hens up. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> they probably couldn't find groceries anymore. <laughs> You know, it's there's. Hey, there's I watched my, the, I watched my grandmother kill a chicken once, and I'm like, I am not eating that. <laughs> oh, I remember one time we had a guest come over, a, 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 another teenager come over, and it's breakfast. We're all eating eggs, and I said, "Hey, you realize those eggs you're eating came out of that hen's butt?" <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> And that boy stopped eating. He didn't need another bite. He's like, I'm not eating that. That <laughs> Oh man. <clears throat> yeah, I never wow. I never sugarcoat things. I told my kids, we're eating cow right now. That's what we're eating, cow. You know. Why do we call fish fish, but we don't call cow cow? Yeah. We call, we call it beef, but somebody's anyway. phone's going off. I'm, I'm turning it off. No, no worries. Doesn't bother me a bit. I haven't heard that ringer in quite a long time. Mine's <laughs> got music. <laughs> it comes with the phone. I never changed it. Uh-huh. Less things to muck up. I love messing with ringtones. Yeah, I've processed a lot of cows and pigs. Yeah. <laughs> You know, no, some hey, people don't realize. Check this, check this out, Earl. Uh, my my ex-wife was Puerto Rican, right? And I've been to Puerto Rico several times. Well, in Puerto Rico, um, they have hens and chickens and roosters and everything everywhere. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I was in their yard, right? And they and they kept complaining. This one rooster is being a you know a problem. So he caught the rooster right in front of us and cooked it. And so we were eating rooster stew when the head was right there looking at us. Yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that, wouldn't, that wouldn't bother me at all. <laughs> but so, I, my brother, my brother actually has a butcher shop and I went and worked uh, <laughs> a deer season in there. That was back in Virginia and they processed around 2,500 deer that year. Wow. So. I want some I, of that. I learned the, uh, where the bones are in a deer pretty quick. I mean, I say pretty quick. I learned, I might not have learned quick, but I learned after that many deer. Oh, yeah. They're, they're, and, and I watched a lot of videos on it because I thought about doing some crossbow hunting and stuff like that and how to skin them. My dad used to do that, skin deer, and um, went to Colorado, and he got, oh, what was it? I don't know what they call them up there. There's the deer, and then there's something else. Elk. Elk? Yeah, elk. He caught an elk, elk. once. <laughs> and uh -oh. we had some good meat that winter. Yeah. yeah. But I miss having... Uh, Deer meat and elk meat. 
Um, when I was a kid, my had a friend who had an airboat, and he were in Florida, and they would go out in the St. Johns River in the swampy area, and they'd catch softshell turtle, and they'd string them up right like on a clothesline. You have all these softshell turtle hanging from a clothesline, and they'd cut their you know heads off and let all the blood drain out, and then they, you know, cook up softshell turtle. Wow, that's hey, yeah. you're hungry, you want to eat. I've been in some swamp land before in Louisiana and watching uh there was a guy that used to catch alligators. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Brenda Baker says interesting. Processing when I was a kid grossed me out, but I can process a deer pretty easily. That is that's that's a true true for a lot of people. They can stand a lot of things. Other than chicken, chicken just stinks. <laughs> True, it does. It it stinks bad. Turkey. Well, we used to have chickens in New Mexico at a friend's house for the <laughs> eggs, and I used to go out there to feed them all the time. And it was like, God, can I spray perfume out here? Or something because it stinks to high heavens. And that was the first time I was around chickens. <laughs> I, I got used to seven chickens, nine guineas, and six turkeys. And they all just run around. Oh, and I have well, three I ducks. Up, I grew up in, in, in Europe with my grandparents uh, when I was younger. We, all she had was cows. So I grew up around cows. Mm. And it was fun to learn how to milk them. I was going to say that there's another channel that I watch and they have milking cows and they took the milking cow to a local school for show and tell. And she started showing them about how to milk the cow. And one kid yelled out really loud. She's like, Oh my God, that cow has four milk wieners. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> milk wieners. <laughs> it didn't yeah, know what an was... udder and a teat was. It's like, oh my god, that cow has four milk wieners. It was hysterical. <laughs> well, I learned how to because they didn't have machines back then, so you had to use your hands. That's how I grew up. We had two cows and you had to go milk. like this to warm your hands. Because <laughs> yeah, if you uh, touch them you with both hands, get, ever seen somebody get kicked when they try to milk a cow? <laughs> That's not good. We had two cows, so I grabbed eight milk wieners a day, twice a day. <laughs> yeah, I'm proficient. Okay, what do we call you then? <laughs> Try to come up with a name for that. <laughs> I don't know, but we better put it on a T-shirt. <laughs> hey, we're sell it on your website. That's right. Put it in my country mama merch. Milk hmm. wieners. Yeah. You wiener milker, you. <laughs> no, that's a different thing. <laughs> yeah, you no. that didn't I didn't mean to say that. Sorry. No, no, no. no. That wasn't right. That was not Back right. Back that truck up. Yeah. Let me erase <laughs> it. Good thing I delete my lives after a week. <laughs> oh wow. That was that funny. Got deep in a hurry. <laughs> okay, my, bad. <laughs> my bad i'm backing up from that <laughs> oh wow uh, i was just reading a message that somebody has well, sent me I, I i didn't grow up on a farm but my my i have three sisters and they had um i have four sisters but one passed away when i was really young but the three mm -hmm. that i had had horses so i grew up you know in around the pasture cleaning out uh, stalls, riding horses, and enjoying uh, all the bad things that happen to horses that they have to stick yeah, things so. down their throat and all that junk. Um, so I, I always uh, was around that stuff. So, Well, you know what takes me a lot of uh, time out of my day is because I have to milk my chickens. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. It's a lot of work. Mm. Good night, Lisa. Good night. Good night, Lisa. Yeah. Tame out the hose. Oh, time you guys out so the hose. You're going to get timed out, Robert. Uh, 
I am. What did I, I say? I can't claim that T-shirt, Brenda. I wish I could. We're gonna let uh, Vision Acres have that tea. They're they're the ones with the cow with all the milk wieners. <laughs> That's the first I've ever heard that. So. Oh wow! Hey, you can't sign me out. You can't sign me out because I'm not typing in the chat. <laughs> ah. You only get timed out if you're typing in the chat. Well, nobody can time you out anyhow because you don't have any mods. I do have mods. Yes. Yes. Who are they? And Fairy Dust is a mod. Uh, and uh, Megan. You can't tell by looking at this chat. You have to look at the chat and Facebook uh, to know. Yeah. Yeah. Look on YouTube. You see it. Yeah. Got yeah. You. That's what I'm looking at right now on Facebook. The chat. Yeah. A and Amy, I made Amy a mod, but she's not here now. Um, Hilda, did you see what? Trying to see who it was here. S said something about she could send you some elk meat. Yeah, I did. Yeah, see that. that's what I was reading just okay. a minute ago. Yeah. Got you. I thought maybe that's the one you had seen, but I didn't know if you'd seen it or not. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, I was just trying to remember who sent it. <laughs> it was uh, uh, Kathleen. Okay, Kathleen. Yeah, I had some moose. I got moose. Oh, I would love. I got some moose, and I made jerky out of the moose. And I had some venison, and I got antelope chops. And because I, I used to work what? antelope chops, like pork chops, antelope. Ah, oh, okay. And they were good. And he used to hunt in Montana, so he brought back moose and and venison and antelope. Yeah, because I would love some good meat. I'm going to make. I don't a video buy. I don't buy a lot of store meat because what they add to their feed, um, I just. Too many, too many chemicals and steroids. Tonight. So I don't eat a lot. Tonight, maybe. Well, guys, I'm going to bow out. Okay. My medication has me. Thank you for being here. Appreciate you coming up. It was nice oh, to you can leave everybody. me here all alone? All right. Have uh -huh. a good night. What? We'll <laughs> still be here. You can still be here. <laughs> well, she means as a female. You need to get I, another I, female I, up here. Because now she's got three bucks to one. <laughs> right. So. Oh, well, uh, we'll have to deal with it. She'll have to deal with it. I took my meds, Brenda. That's why I'm tired. So so just so you guys know, my A1C came back at 13.8. So if anybody knows anything about A1C. I don't know that about that. Full-fledged full diabetes. And I just didn't know. So yeah. I've lost about 35 pounds and I've just been real sick and didn't know. So I'm just like, I'm well, zonked. I'm, I'm happy that you came up. So come, go down whenever you want. You got to go, go. Doesn't matter. I will. I will. Well, I hope you, you feel again. better. Thank you. I don't know if going green mom was talking to me. It was what? Anyways. Uh, no, she was talking to me. It was my A1C. The oh. chart that you see for A1C goes to like 12. Mine was 13.8. So. Oh. Oh, we'll take those. I'm getting care. better, and I won't look like this next time. I'll look better. What are you talking mm -hmm. about? You look great. I look like I'm ready to go to bed. I'm gonna well, go have, have a, a three way with my blanket and my pillow. Have a good night. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving. Good night, guys. You too. Good night. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Megan, I gave her a wrench tonight. That's where the debate is. There's no debate if you ask the source and you're asking the source now. And it was tonight I gave her a wrench. So let me catch back up. But I thought that was a week ago or a week or do ago. No, it was tonight. Well, shucks. Good night, Alicia. Take meds. I really thought she had it last week. Nope, it was today. Yep, today. Let me oh. catch up here. 
Yeah, I missed the number. Yeah, he disappeared. Oh, he just hid from the camera for now. That's all right. I did the same thing when you guys were talking. I took the opportunity to take care of a few things. And Brenda says, you always look so great. How, yeah. How was your dinner earlier that you made? Oh, it's so good. <laughs> so good. So good. Oh, I had, I had brats for dinner. Okay, I don't eat broths anymore. I mean, I used to eat sometimes, but I don't do that much anymore. Well, I don't do it all the time. I do it every once in a, every couple months. Mm-hmm. Because things have gotten so expensive, it's like I can't afford a lot. Oh, excuse me. Uh, Megan says, what was dinner, Robert? It was more ribs. I had three ribs, big old pile of veggies, corn, and green beans, I think it was. And I had some French fries. I haven't had French fries in a while. So I had some. Somebody's baked, got a good drink. They were baked French fries. Yeah, my throat was getting dry. Right on. That's what I did when you guys started talking. I took a. <clears throat> Used to I have tea. my raspberry tea. I don't like raspberry tea. I like tea. <laughs> I drink <clears throat> regular tea, raspberry tea, green tea, whatever I have in the house, I drink. Yeah. <clears throat> and I drink my hot chocolate in the morning and at night before I go to bed. Brenda says, I had brisket and chopped barbecue and fried mm. okra. That sounds good. I'm not into okra. I had fried okra before. Didn't like it. Uh, I didn't either. I don't like the taste. I don't like the texture or the taste. Brenda, how do you do your brisket? Brisket is so good. It's all good. I put Brisket mine it's done right. in a slow cooker overnight on low to where it just Wait. falls apart. <laughs> Brenda says, I'm having a bourbon and Pepsi back. Laugh out loud. <laughs> I, had, I just did shots of Fireball. How about that? Fireball. So, and I got to wake up in the morning and skedaddle over to Disney. Kathleen Klein showing a cup of coffee. I've never liked coffee. I'm not saying I wouldn't like it now, but I've never liked coffee. I never thought I would drink coffee either growing up, but I moved to Ohio and worked construction and you almost have to drink something warm to stay warm in the winter time and in ohio the wind blows and it's cold and it's yeah coffee is the most readily available hot drink there is you can get it anywhere so i learned to like it and now i almost can't live without it so what coffee yeah, coffee. You guys can keep all the coffee you want. I, I'll stick with my hot tea and my hot cocoa. <clears throat> I tasted coffee once, and I did not like the taste. I put creamer in it, put sugar. I still didn't like it. I got all the way to where I can drink it black now. I never thought I'd do that, but, yeah, I can drink it black just as well as with sugar or whatever. Yeah. My brother used to drink uh, all day long coffee. And I tell him, I said, all that coffee's not good. All right. I got, I got, um, an acuteness, acuteness overload. I'm going to share for you. Okay. 
cuteness overload. Let me see here if I can get it queued up. I'm already on here. I know you're cute. That's for sure. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Definitely cute. <laughs> and I'm saying, well, that see, I'm here with two cute guys. Oh, <laughs> you're too kind. Oh, that was a year or two ago. <laughs> yeah. so cute. That was yeah. before your that was before your beard got as gray as mine. <laughs> yeah, well that beard is just seasonal. Yeah. <laughs> it, well it, they it, say that gray beard is a sign of your intelligence. Yeah, well that's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Is it a lie? I, I got a lot of gray. <laughs> Well, uh, I haven't hung around you long enough. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, let me see here. Yeah, that that picture says so much to me. Um, that's that is a love affair that I don't think I'll ever experience again, and I never felt before. And. It just, it changed my life, really did, to have a grandbaby uh, make me feel that way. It's just a special yeah, pressure. You're so cute. Yeah. And you know what he called me? Um, let's see here. Hold on. I lost you. Let's here we go. Here we go. He called me whoa, whoa. That whoa, was, whoa. whoa, that's whoa. cute. And they got it from abuelo because they couldn't say abuelo in Spanish, that's grandfather. So they just would call me whoa, whoa. Yeah. So, so uh, I want to so see cute. if I can uh, share, a, share a picture, see, see if I know how. I mean, I. I don't have any special picture I want to share. I just want to see if you can walk me through how to do it on StreamYard. Um, do you have any um, any kind of uh, links on the bottom that talked about, you know, mute, stop there cam? Is a share, there's a share link down there. Okay. So I hit the share. But, did, but before you do that, you got to have the picture that you want has to be on your desktop. On the desktop. Right. It has to be open. The file has to be open. And it has to be on your desktop. And like I said, you know how you can have different pages on your desktop, but you they're overlapping in layers? Yeah. Yeah. Just, just scoot it to the side a little bit just so you can yeah, click I on it. I got that. I got that. I got it clicked on. Okay. So then go to share the screen. And when you hit share the screen, you'll have two options. Uh, let me share. Stop. It says screen sharing is easiest with two monitors. Screen sharing works best. Yeah. You should have the option of screen share or video share. Yeah, I did the screen share. Okay, you should be good there. And then just click share screen. And then when you click share screen, you have an option. You have the entire screen. Then you have window and then Chrome tab and select window. All I have is when window or screen. All right. Well, select window. You should should be good on window because you're sharing something from your own computer files, not something off the Internet. Got you. Oh, OK. And then when you select window, then you click on the image you want to share. And then the cancel or share icons, one will highlight share and you should be able to it share says it. says allow, but I, that it may be sharing. Yeah, see that? No. Yeah, that shared the whole screen. I don't want to share the whole well, screen, the whole album, whatever. Well, then you got to go back to that album. Go back to the album. No, you were good. You could leave it up. You can leave it up, but go back to the album and click the photo you want. Double click on it, and it'll bring it up. 
Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. All right. So you were good where you were at. I got you, that. Because you okay. were. I could, I could see you here, but then right. you, you got out of it, so it's gone. What? Oh, share screen. Share screen. No, that's the wrong one. I need to go back. And yeah, because what you did before worked. Because I saw you in the basement with your no, screen. but that was the whole that was the whole album though, right? Right, but you can still you can you can uh, go back to your desktop where you had that and double click on it, and it'll bring it up, and you'll you can share that. See, this is the one I want to share. It disappears every time I hit share because, oh, here, no. Share screen, share. See, that's, that's right not there. Hold on. Right there. Now go back to your desktop where you have that album and click on the image you want and it'll like, blow it up okay did it blow it up not yet it's i still see multiple images i'm gonna bring it up if you don't mind and let's see if it actually changed okay all right so yeah we're seeing what no, you're seeing now. yeah that's just the whole album well, you should. But how do, I just, if how you, do I just get one picture up there? You should just double, click it. Click yeah, on the picture on the in, image that you want to share. It's the one up there that's highlighted, though. Hmm. I mean, I don't really care you, if you, you share any of these. You're things. out of if you're you got to be out of Streamyard to do it. You don't have to X out of anything, but you got to go to that that file that oh now you're out yeah i took i took it down so um another browser has to be open wonder it, okay so it's back here whoops no not that come on see that's why i wanted to try it because if i try it on one of my lives then you can't do it <laughs> Yeah, see, I'll share with you what, what happens to the same situation you just did, and I'm going to share it with you. So this is the same thing that you were doing. Okay. So now I'm going to go back. Pictures. I'm going to go back to that file and double click on the image I want to share like that. Oh, you look so cute. So where did you, okay, do that again. I didn't see where the cursor was. Well, I have to get, I have to slide StreamYard over to the side to expose the file below it, which is your photos. Right. And then when you got that, like here, you double click on whatever you want and it, it'll pull it up. And that's when you have it in the basement. Or when I would have it in the basement, I could double click on that. Yeah, but you only double click on the actual file. So you have to not touch the StreamYard window. You have to go to the original window, the actual file. Right. So. Uh, share. Share screen. What is that? Ball? Truck? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is it? Truck. Fire truck. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Yeah, that was before he had words. <laughs>
pay the dancing. <laughs> I don't know. I'm too dumb. I can't figure it out. I guess gray hair doesn't make you smart. Like you're riding a bucking horse. One hand on, one hand off. <laughs> I like the looks they give on their faces. <laughs> Whoa. You got the abs going. <laughs> yeah, adorable. Mm hmm. Yeah, well, I still see your, I still see your file here with all the multiple pictures. Yeah, but I put it, I put it back up there, but <clears throat> I can't, right. I can't figure out how to get the photo up. Just you want share it. one photo. I can share a whole album. I don't know how to share a photo. Hmm. Oh well. I'll figure it out one day, maybe. Yeah, um, this little boy loved me so much that his grandmother and his father were jealous of me. <laughs> But they tried to actually keep him from me. That's how sad wow. it was. They tried to keep him from me. Talk about a heartbreak. That was a heartbreak because. Uh, that is. People shouldn't you know. do that. Yeah, I remember one time when I was at work, I cut grass for a living. And his, his grandmother called me and, where are you at? Like that, real firm. Where are you at? I said, what do you mean where I'm at? I'm cutting lawns. She says, no, what's the address? This kid will not stop crying till he sees his whoa whoa. <laughs> and, you know, I was not a, a, a pushover. I, I would have told him, you got to suck it up, little kid. And wait till your woe comes home. And when your woe comes home, you'll see him. He's working. But the other part was just bring him to me, you know. Yeah. And that's what happened. I said, just bring him to me. And she brought him to me. And he was crying. And when he saw me, he's just like, you know, oh, come here. And I hug him. And I said, now, you know, I shake my finger in his face. I said, you're going to go home and behave for your tata. And Wo was working, and when Wo comes home, we'll spend time together. Until then, Wo has got to work, and that's how I treated him, like a little man, you know. And he got stronger because of it. He was a good kid. <laughs> oh yeah. Sorry, I'm reading a message. Yeah. I'm I'm way behind in the chat, but I'm still trying to catch up. Oh no 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 no! This is uh, my other half. I got you. He's texting me asking me if I'm okay. <sighs> Since for a week, two almost two weeks, I've been not feeling the greatest. Mm. Well, and he's worried. Well, let's pray for you right now, then. Um, let's pray for you right now. See, I was supposed to go to the doctors today, but uh, I didn't make it. I had to change it to Monday. Okay. Well, I'm going to pray for you right now. 
Heavenly Father, I just lift up Hilda to you right now. I, whatever's going on in her body, you have control over it because you created her. And I give her to you that you would help her feel better and show the doctors whatever they need to see to help her feel better. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. Amen. Mm -hmm. For some reason, it's I can drink stuff and um, soups, but solid food, it I can't keep it down for some reason. Mm, sorry to hear that. But I'm, tonight, so far, my food has not. <laughs> it's staying down. Oh, good. Thank God. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it's Vanessa from Moments with Vanessa. Hello, how are you? Yes, up Hi, way Vanessa. too late. Up way too late. Going to go to Epcot tomorrow. And yes, I need to go to sleep sometime soon. Oh, 30 and a wake up. No, I didn't see 30 and a wake up. Why? What did he do today? Ah, I don't know. That's Kevin. 30 and a wake up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes, Kevin. He was the... He was my first live I ever watched of uh, traveling. Cool. Oh, thank you, Vanessa. That's nice. Thanks, Vanessa. Yeah. I thank you. Yeah, he's good. I mean, he really is good. I just, there's just too many people to watch. I can't watch them all and to. Uh, I'm still catching up. I'm not going to catch up. I tell people that straight up. I'm just honest with people. I can't watch everybody's live. There's no way I can be at your live and be at their live and be at their live and be at their live because I have a life. Well, I have my tablet on one person. I have my phone on another. So I'm doing three at a time. I'm doing a, a Kenny. No, I'm multitasking. <laughs> oh, Vanessa says, Hilda, I'm here if you need me. That was nice. Why, thank you. Uh, we have a lot of Robs, too. Yeah. I'm not Rob. I'm just the Reef Robert. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, at one time, I was in a live where we had three Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I've been on some lives like that. Where there's one person, three uh, na same name, and it's like, okay, you're number one, you're number two, and you're number three. <laughs> you know, here's what I do. Um, when people watch my videos and they're create content, they're content creators, I go watch their video immediately. As soon if I as soon as I can, if they watch one of my videos, I will click on their video or on their channel and go watch a video. And so forth. That's how I try to keep up. And as quick as I can, I watch a video from them. That's what I try to do. Or I'll take a picture that will be on my phone that will remind me I got to go watch a video just because I want to return the favor, you know. Where's Rob tonight? Rob was Rob was in my live earlier. But yeah, he's probably at work. It's okay, Vanessa. You know, no big deal. I tell people straight up, I, I'm sorry I can't make it to your <laughs> life. I mean, I, I, I've said this many times. I have a job. I have a full-time job. Um, mm -hmm. I also have grandchildren. I have children. And I have siblings. I have my own truck. And I have my own RV to take care of. And I have maintenance on all that. And I also need time to myself to just be nothing going on in my mind, like watch a movie or whatever. Um, and then I call people on the phone and talk to people on the phone. So uh, I can't be in all these lives. And I got I got to network. The only way I get subscribers really is if I'm networking. Fairy Dust says, I like it when we're all on the same lives. Well, we can't all be on the same live. That would be interesting. <laughs> but we'd all get bored with, or at least y'all would get bored with me. <laughs> After a while. I mean, if you don't switch it up. Well, see, on mine, 
what I watch is uh, crafting, cross stitch, you guys, and guys building cabins out in the middle of nowhere. Mm. Uh, Brenda says, I got to figure out something to make videos on. You know what? It's For me, it's endless. I have so much content that I can't even share it. Well, some people do it music. Some people go and just do scenery wherever they go, a drive or whatever, because I've seen people do that. Or when they're out on a lake fishing or mm -hmm. whatever your hobby is. Uh, Vanessa asked if I'm in ministry. I used to be in ministry. I used to be. I used to be an evangelist. I used to be a uh, kids ministry, praise and worship uh, director for kids ministry kind of thing. Um, and a lot of other ministries I used to be in. But um, when I went through uh, divorce uh, and I moved back to my hometown, I am not in touch with my home church anymore. So I'm not involved anymore. But my heart goes out to people who are hurting, you know, so I try to pray for them. That's the least I could do, you know, pray for them. Um, so I just keep asking the Lord to heal my body to where I'll be back to normal and I can do the things I want to do. <laughs> yeah. Uh, unfortunately, our bodies are deteriorating every second, so we're not typically getting healthier. Um, I know. You know, but some of us, it's faster than others. Sure. Absolutely. Uh, I think um, obviously the common everyday things that people don't really know how to apply are getting good sleep. Number one, got to get good sleep. You got to mm -hmm. you got to eat pretty good. You don't have to be perfect, but you got to eat pretty good. Um, and you know you can't do a lot of unhealthy things. You know, I mean, I drink soda. So I'm not preaching. I'm just saying, you know, that doesn't help me. I know that drinking soda is not good for me. And I know that eating lots of sugary snacks is not good for me. So I'm not preaching at all. I'm just saying, if we want to have a healthier body, we need to treat our body better and it will respond. If we don't, it's going to get worse. So I, I try to ride my bicycle. I try to lift some weights and I try to eat less junk. And it has helped me. I've lost weight. My joints are stronger from riding a bike. So I do a whole lot better because of it. My job, I walk a lot. I um, roll metal for roofing and siding. And I do the on-site uh, standing seam panels. So I stack a lot of them. Yeah, I'm a roof. I'm a roofer. I used to be a contractor, a roofing contractor. There you go. 7.9 miles today. 15,839 steps. Wow. <clears throat> Thank you, uh, Vanessa. Very nice of you to say. Uh, yeah, I, I am a roofer. I used to be a roofing contractor. I used to be a lawn servant. I, I had a roofing company and a lawn company. Kind of overlapped when the recession hit in 2009 i started to transition out of the construction into lawn maintenance and uh then i did lawn service all the way up until about two years ago and i got a job at my local school board doing roofing maintenance which is so much laid back you know i'm not really doing a lot of hard work yeah um, but i'm still doing you know leak detection things like that maintenance drain cleaning gutter cleaning yeah, uh, trimming trees back, uh, roof patches, small jobs, nothing very large. But it still requires me to climb ladders, and I'm very active yeah. climbing ladders, carrying ladders, carrying products, pulling stuff up on a rope onto a roof. Uh, so, um, and working out has made me better. Actually, I'm using only 15 pound dumbbells, and that has made me stronger. And I can notice the difference when I'm climbing a ladder and when I'm carrying something. I can feel the strength that I have now before I didn't have. Yeah. The only no, way I, I can 
The only weight I can use is two pounds. <laughs> I think I moved around 12,000 pounds of steel today. So that's wow. a little bit of stuff. So Right. Uh, Brenda says, my hobby is YouTube, unless we travel, but haven't done that in a couple of years. I tried to figure out how to make at videos of pics from past vacations, but it didn't work. Well, contact me, Brenda. I will be able to help you if you'd like some help. I am available to help. Uh, I will do my best. I'm not a tech guy. I just know what I do to make my videos. And, yeah. and maybe I can help you. I'd be happy to help you. Uh, walk you through something, maybe help you. Um, Check because, out YouTube too, because they have right. channels that tell you how to do it. Good point. Hey, Timmy Ray, the king. Hey, how are you doing? Nice to see you. Yes, that's a good point, uh, um, Hilda. There's so many tutorials out there that are custom to what software you're using, whether it's a mm -hmm. you know a Samsung phone or iPhone, whatever. You just type it in. And they'll have tutorials that'll walk you through how to, you know, I think the hardest part is getting your file onto the software so you can chop it up and do all that. Yeah. Cause I can do it from my phone. I can do all editing from my phone. I prefer not to cause I have more flexibility and ease of function to use it on my desktop. I used to do all mine on my phone. And then I, I finally got a computer because I, I didn't have space on my phone anymore. Right. For one thing, and it's a lot. It's a, there's a lot of things that are a lot easier on desktop, but at the same time, the app that I'm using on my phone has upgraded to where it's actually not bad. I just went on and edited a couple small videos on it on my phone again. I was pretty impressed with the way they got that now. Yeah, and 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 tell me if you are aware of this already, but what I found out is um, memory is is a big issue. So if you bog down your memory on your phone or on your desktop, it's going to slow down your editing process. So you must keep your memory clear as possible. And on a phone, you don't realize this. Every time you send a text, every time you send an email, everything you send an instant message, anything like that with any kind of data, whether it's text, video or pictures, it is duplicated onto your phone as taking up memory. So you have to go through every text every email and delete any photo, any text, any video off of that because it's copied onto your phone and it bogs your phone memory down. You don't realize it, but that's what happens. So every, every so often I have to go on my phone and start deleting all the texts and all the emails with any phones, messages, text, video, or pictures because it bogs down your phone memory. Same thing on my computer, mm -hmm. same thing on my computer, you know, and, and you should be able to find that out on your computer. There should be a, a way to look up your memory and what's your memory being used by, what's it being filled by, document, right. it, all that. So when you see that, it'll tell you a graph or a, some kind of a graph chart or whatever. It'll say, you know, 40% is here, 30% is here, 10%. And so you go there yeah. and you click on that and it'll tell you, it'll break it down even finer for you to go, oh, wow, I got a lot of documents over here and these are in high, high definition. I need to delete those. And if they're in 4K, forget it. They're robbing your memory big time. Yeah, I go through my files all the time and get rid of stuff that I don't need. Mm -hmm. on my phone mm -hmm. my phone's full right now <laughs> Kathleen Klein says huh Robert I need the gutters cleaned out on my city house I'll pay you in prime <laughs> beef sure I'd be happy to how tall is the roof I got a ladder I don't know if it's too tall I don't have that kind of a ladder I got a two story ladder but not a three story ladder <clears throat> She's talking skyscraper. 
I, I, you know, I used to have a three-story ladder, but when my back went out, I am not manhandling no three-story ladder anymore. <laughs> hey, I've enjoyed being up here, but I am about to fall asleep. So, all right, Earl, thank you for coming up. It's been fun. I appreciate it. Yep, I, uh, I try to catch yours every once in a while. I don't catch near all of them, but. No worries, man. Don't worry about it. Drop in and say hi and give you a thumbs up and that kind of thing. All right. Well, let me do this. Uh, if any of you guys haven't seen The Reef Robber, that's Earl down here in the bottom. Go check out his channel. Watch a couple of videos and make some comments and say hello and subscribe if you like it. I always enjoy the interaction with everybody. Comments in my videos. And yeah. Good meeting some of you people and seeing your faces and all that too. So, all right, I'm going to shout out one more channel before you go. It's called Travis Does Kayak Fishing. He just reached 1,000, so we want to keep him over 1,000 subscribers. Travis Does Kayak Fishing. Let me go see if I can find him. And he, he's in, uh, he's near uh, St. Augustine, Florida, kayaks. And goes fishing off his kayak. So he just hit 1,000. So I told him I was going to shout him out. So I'm shouting him out. <laughs> Travis does kayak fishing. Is it this one? I believe I so. I believe so. If it's Travis does kayak fishing, that's him. I already have him. Cool. All so, right. All right, Earl. I must be one of the thousand. <laughs> right on. <laughs> well, if you watch a video, let them know I shouted them out. You know, that I would appreciate yep. that. All righty. All right. Thanks, Earl. Man, you have a yep. great Thanksgiving. Hey, you too. Thank you. Have a good one. Have a good one. All right, everybody said good night. And Kathleen says, I'll check it out. Good stuff on there. I started listening to Kiss music since I was six. I never liked Kiss. Sorry, <laughs> never liked them. And especially after Gene Simmons' latest comments, don't like them even more. But <laughs> that's another topic. There's your other Travis Kathleen. <laughs> cool. Sweet dreams. Got him to now. Well, let him know RV Weekend sent him, sent you to him. I would appreciate it. And just so you guys know, I'm not making any money on YouTube. So it's not a money motivation. It's just trying to be help supportive people who need support. That's all. I am not monetized. Let's see. I need a shout out to I got 400 something subscribers. Well, there's your shout out. You just shouted yourself out, Timmy Ray King. I need a shout out to go to I got 400 subscri something subscribers. All right. <laughs> Have a great night, Earl. It was a pleasure to have you up. And hanging out for so long. We're getting closer, Timmy Ray, Tracy says. <laughs> All right. You want some questions or you want some pictures or you want to hang up the phone? Questions. Questions. Let's do some questions. All right. What are you looking forward to this Christmas? Family. Family. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Family. Let's see here. We got eight in the chat. What are you guys looking forward to in the chat about Christmas? What is the favorite thing or the thing you most look forward to at Christmas? And what do you look forward to? 
Uh, yeah, seeing seeing my grandkids open gifts, you know, and just getting a hug around the neck. That's the greatest. Yes, I mean, when, it's fun me, watching kids open gifts. You know, I'm kind of a hairy guy, so when I have the grandkids that are like running their hand up and down my arm, <laughs> fascinated by the hair on my arm and 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 then just give me a kiss on the cheek. Uh, it's just, I mean, it doesn't get much better. Now, I actually have a video where that's how it ended with my grandson. He just gave me a big old kiss on the cheek and I didn't even ask him for it. He just gave it to me. Oh, they uh, do. They surprise you. Mm -hmm. Kathleen, good night. Thank you for hanging out. Good night, Kathleen. Yeah, Christmas has been hard for years. I understand that. Uh, last Christmas wasn't easy. This Christmas won't be easy, but it'll be easier. Um, I remember, you know, going through a divorce and being in Christmas by myself. It was hard. It's happened to me several mm -hmm. times. So I remember my first Christmas when after my divorce, mm -hmm. <laughs> I was by myself. Mm -hmm. How about this? What are you looking forward to next year? Hmm. What am I looking forward to next year? Getting out and traveling. Hmm. Yeah. Go to some places I've never been. Fairy dust, why aren't you up here? Uh, Tracy Ocean Fire, why aren't you up here? Um, <laughs> I'm hoping, you know, I'm hoping that I'll be able to buy a piece of property next year. Or I'm definitely looking at, like I said, doing that RV tech training next year. Let's see here. I hope you get to do it. What I am looking forward for Christmas is the food. All right. Nice. Speaking of food, I probably need to eat something. It's been a long time since <laughs> I eat. Uh, Megan says, my mom passed December 10th, and I was putting up the tree when I got the call. Dad passed in January, and things have been tense since. Yeah, that sounds wow. like a very tough thing to deal with. I'm sorry that you got to deal with that. Um, I lost yeah. my mom a day after my birthday last year, a year ago. My mom passed a day after my birthday. Um, I lost my dad December the 7th, 2000. Mm. Right before Christmas. Yeah, so we just had my mom's uh, anniversary of her death, of her passing. Yeah, because my birthday's in October, so it happened... In October. So, yeah, I understand you're grieving. I understand that. Yep. So, I'm going to pray for Megan right now then. Okay. Lord, I lift up Megan to you because she lost her mom and her dad within a few months. So, I pray you bring uh, a sense of peace over her. The, let her know that there's hope after people pass. There's things to live for. And even though we love those ones that passed on, you know, death is a part of living and it's something we have to learn how to adjust to. So I pray that you help Megan adjust to that and to go on and to be stronger and to feel their presence in certain ways and that she'll be happy that the, she had the time with them and not the time without them. Give her that peace in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Right. Megan, I hope you feel I'm really I'm oh, we got a visitor. Hey, it's it's fairy dust. I'm oh, up wow. again. Thank you for coming <laughs> up. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Nice hat. It's a beanie. Nice Amen. beanie. Nice beanie. Amen, Amen to to Megan. Thank you. Thank 
The mm -hmm. beanie says Bible here. Basic information before leaving Earth. Bible. Right. Basic instructions before leaving Earth. Right. Gotcha. Okay. Information, but okay. Anyway. Gotcha. Timmy Ray says, what my dad, Charles, is looking forward is the food in open presence going to the casino. <laughs> All right. Have fun. Merry Christmas. Ooh, the casino. Oh. Megan says, I don't know. I'm trying to go with the flow right now, trying not to be worried about the kids flying the coop. Hey, I uh, understand how you feel, but um, we raise them. And then we have to let them go and they choose their way. It's not up to us. Mm -hmm. They choose their way. But you know what? They're always going to be closer. Mom, how do I do this? Or mom, what do you think about that? Oh, believe me, you're not going to get rid of them. <laughs> mm. uh, Megan says, thanks, Robert. I should have included years. Mom passed in 2008. Dad passed in 2019. Okay. Still, it's difficult. You think about it. But thank you for clearing that up. Oh, yeah. And thank Jesus. Yes. Thank Jesus. I deal with a lot of death. It's okay. Yeah, I I know. Yeah, I've I've I saw my, you know, I saw my uncle have a heart attack and and it's not easy and and uh my, you know, my my son seen a lot of, you know, death in his mom's side grandfather grandmother his aunt his cousin suicide things like that they have to deal with <clears throat> you know but it's all about when we understand we have to understand the meaning of life and i don't want to get too philosophical or too religious but we have to understand the meaning of life why we're here we're born <clears throat> literally and i don't mean this to be black and white cold as ice we're born to die because the day we're born, we're one day closer to dying because we have a time we're going to die. Um, so we have, if we have that mindset that we're going to die, then it's not so traumatic when it happens. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt because we love those people dearly and it hurts to lose them. Um, but we also are prepared for it. You know, I knew my mom was going to die soon, so I was prepared for it. Um, but I tell my son that ever since he was old enough to understand, your dad's going to die. So you need to be prepared when your dad dies. You know, it's not a bad thing. It's not fun, but that's part of living. Life is so fragile that we're all going to die. A hundred out of a hundred die. So we have to be ready for it. And we have to be able to move on and do our daily living because we weren't we weren't born to kill ourselves. That's not why we were born. We were born to live our life and enjoy the life. And how do we enjoy life? By serving others, giving of our time to others, being loving to others. Because life is not worth living if we're living it all about us. It needs to be about others. That's the only way we can enjoy life by by doing things for other people. So that helps soften the blow when we know the meaning of life. Uh, mm, okay. Yeah, Vanessa, death is hard. It is. It's very hard, but you have to also realize that uh, there's more than one dimension in this universe. I mean, there's, I've heard people say, I'll believe it when I see it. Well, you don't see the wind. You see the effects of the wind. You don't see ultraviolet rays, but you feel the effects of ultraviolet rays. You don't see microwaves, but you cook food with a microwave. You know, there's a lot of things you don't see, but you see the evidence of it. So, True. you know, that's something that we have to Very put true. faith. That's what faith is, believing in something that is unseen. That's what faith is. Right. Um, you know, and I understand that from the cradle to the grave. For me, um, when I was 15, I'll share this. When I was 15, my dad was 33 and he could do no wrong. I love that man. And he had 
directed me and guided me for my future. Mm -hmm. And he was 33 years old at work, passing out the checks to the guys at work. And he was crushed by an elevator shaft. And that just traumatized me. I didn't know how to react to it. I didn't know what I was going through at 15 years old. Mm -hmm. The whole family was grieving in their own way and stuff. And I couldn't talk to them. They didn't talk to me. So I held it all in. Mm -hmm. Never told anybody at school. Never. Mm -hmm. um, no one knew except for one best friend of mine because of the tragedy she went through with her father a couple years mm -hmm. before. Mm -hmm. And being on YouTube this year, I was able to um, deal with the skeletons that were in the closet because I've, I um, had it so far in me that I never really talked about it, but I felt throughout my life, I just felt it and I felt it and mm -hmm. always, uh, you know, mm -hmm. trying to deal with it my own way. So being mm -hmm. on YouTube, I've been able to talk about it a little bit better without mm -hmm. breaking down and being all um, emotional uh, regarding it. So I've, I've, Thank God for the strength and the faith that I have because it's helped me mm -hmm. um, try to cope with it. I don't know if I have totally, but that was a shocker for me. Mm -hmm. You know, why Why was he so young, 33, and the tragedy that he went through? It was just, it was in the news and the papers, everything. So, yeah, yeah you have to, you have to uh, try your best to deal with something like that. There's different deaths out there. Um, something came to my mind. Now, I don't know if it's a good analogy, but if you think about a dam as a tragic, a traumatic event in our life, it, it's a big pressure pushing against our mental state. You know, it's, it's blowing our mind. Our mind can't comprehend all that's going on here. It's a lot of pressure and I can relate it to a divorce, you know, all this pressure. And I think a dam we let a little pressure out a little at a time to deal with it slowly instead of all at once, because if it's all at once, we curl up in a ball and we can't function. Just like Megan says, life doesn't stop. You still have to feed, you have to milk the cows, you, you know, and that being busy helps distract us from the pressure and the weight of the devastating circumstances. But then when we get alone, we can let a little bit out of the dam and get a little bit of that grieving over with. And it, it takes time to, 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 to get that pressure to where it equalizes, to where we're not overwhelmed with grief because it is a lot of weight. It's a lot of pressure. Um, yeah. So let, let when me, you're 15, let me, right. Let me read the rest of uh, Megan's comment here. Uh, rain or shine, cold or hot, weddings, funerals, uh, are, and on the rare occasion, something like being next to someone as they pass or something a neighbor or someone might help out, but the cow st still needs milking. Right. I agree. I agree. But we still have to, you know, grieve or we'll never be over it we have to when it's not that we forget it's okay it's okay to be okay you know because sometimes we feel like i shouldn't be okay with this traumatic event because i feel guilty for getting over it but it's actually a healthy thing to get over it now we're not forgetting about it we're not diminishing what has happened but if we don't get over it it'll ruin us. It'll physically deteriorate our body. Our health will become unhealthy and we don't want to be unhealthy because being unhealthy is not any way we want to live our daily lives. We want to be healthy, you know, and it's okay to get over it. Like if my spouse died, it's okay to move on and meet another person. It's okay. It doesn't mean we're disrespecting our our widow or a widow or whatever, but we have to be living our life. Otherwise, otherwise, why are we here? We have to live it. And part of living is emotions. 
And a part of emotions is happiness, joy, sorrow, all that. But we have to live life and enjoy or in we have to uh, be involved in those emotions. And joy is a good thing because Jesus says, take heart. You In this life, you will have trouble, but take heart. I'm with you through it. So we got to right. have the ability to get over and past things. It doesn't mean that person that we are leaving behind isn't important. It just means we have to be healthy. They want us to be healthy. I'm sure you're, you know, whatever mom, dad would want you to be healthy and move on. Or your ex, your uh, widowed or person, your spouse that died would want you to be healthy. So I'm reading more comments here. Uh, Timmy Ray says, going green. Mom, think about this. My friend, he or she is in a better place with a good man, the Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. our Lord and Savior. Very good point. Hey, that, yes. When, when my dad died in 2000, it didn't hit me until I got home. When right. I went back to Indiana, because I came down here to El Paso, Texas for mm -hmm. the funeral. And then I saw him and everything. I was okay. But when I got back home and it was quiet, nobody was in the house except me. That's when it hit me really hard. Right. That I won't get to talk to him anymore. I don't get to see him. I didn't get to do anything. And mm -hmm. for like two or three days straight, I just cried. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because we... Kid, asking me are you okay you okay and i said no your grandfather just died recent because they were with me and uh it was like it was really hard mm. yeah wow look at that megan says definitely uh upsetting about her mom because it caught her off guard because she was told given six months to live and she passed away a week later yeah that's devastating yeah that is I'm so sorry. My mom, uh, my adopted mom is in a nursing home because she's got, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, dementia or mm -hmm. old timers, whichever. Mm -hmm. She's got that. And my real mother, she's still alive. She's in back and forth from. Arizona to Alaska. So she just had a massive heart attack not too long ago, but she's still here. But my adopted mom, she remembers little things. Um, and I'm still trying to figure out how can I be in two places at once? Because she says I come to see her every day in Oklahoma. I mean, not Oklahoma. Yeah, Oklahoma. Well, this is what comes to my mind right now. Oh, if let, I like the way the, he's trying to put his hands on your face. Right. And, and let's <laughs> use this as an example. And I've used this in evangelism often. My grandbaby, if my grandbaby died tomorrow, should I look at what could have been or should I look at what I had? Yeah. All the time I had with this little baby. Look mm -hmm. at this. He's just so loving to his grandfather. His whoa, whoa is just precious to him. I'll never the good forget memories. The yeah. The good memories. Exactly. They they always tell us, um, don't don't grieve. Well, everybody's gonna grieve, but remember the life. Remember yeah, always the remember the things. life. The good things. When you go to a funeral, when you have services like that celebrate life and yeah. that puts you in a more of a healing and peace absolutely yeah, yeah. I with all I your pictures that. you look like you're making a decoupage <laughs> yeah. right <I> know. <laughs> well the, the, with this software you can you can do zoom in and out yeah so i can zoom in yeah i if I'm looking for a I picture, remember I all the good things of my dad, all the things we did, go camping, 
the traveling. Oh, uh, yeah. The military oh. life, because he was in the military and the traveling we did. And when I was growing up in Europe, all the things like going hiking and stuff like that. I remember a lot of that stuff. But every yep. once in a while when I'm depressed or upset about something, I go over here to the military cemetery at Fort Bliss and I go talk to him. Even though he doesn't answer me back, but I go talk to him. Right. Yep. <clears throat> Here's my so, mom. And, oh, she was pretty. She's holding a birdie. Yeah. She's what is feeding, she feeding the bird? I think it's a peanut butter cracker. <laughs> <laughs> and here's my daughter on the on the middle on the left. Aww. I used to give her butterfly kisses. <laughs> she was five. At that time, I don't remember exactly, but yeah. I was counting the candles. And these are my sisters. Great pictures. Mm-hmm. And this is the sister that passed away when I was one year old. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, what was her name? Her name was Dolores. Oh, that's right. Dolores. Yeah. And I just recently got some pictures that I already showed. Let me, let me, uh, let me think <clears throat> on them. Ten years Sounds ago, my youngest sister passed away. She, mm. her name was uh, Ginger, and we always called her Gigi. Aww. She was the baby. Hmm. Out of six kids. Wow. Yeah, we had eight. My mom had eight. Well, this is the joke in my family. Uh, my adopted mom had three the easy way and three the hard way. Mm. <coughs> so there's my mom and dad. That picture there. Oh, they look, they look so like cute. Mm -hmm. Beautiful couple. But right there, mm -hmm. she reminds me of, there's pictures of Madonna before she became Madonna. And she had the dark hair and that same look. Your mom has colored eyes or had colored eyes? Oh, yeah. She's got blue, blue eyes. Yeah. And she looks just like, or Madonna looks just like your mom before she became Madonna. And I says, wow, it's, it has to be the Italian blood. Yeah. They look like that. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. Beautiful couple. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let me show you another one. There you go. There you go. Can't see a thing. <laughs> oh, how see? cute. But when I see black and white, my mind goes straight to what color is that? I wonder what color that is. I wonder what color this is. Yeah. Yeah. That was, so the, the little girl with my father, that is Dolores. And then that's my okay. oldest brother, Henry. In my mom's arms. Oh wow! So Dolores was the oldest. Okay. Yeah, because we alternated girl boy all the way with the birth. Mm. Wow. So started with a girl and ended with a boy. Hmm. Yeah. Pretty genius of your father to do that. <laughs> yeah. And this was the same day. I think oh, I, yeah. showed, I showed these pictures before because I got comments about the location. It looks like it's yeah. 
Yeah. Florida. Yeah, I remember. <laughs> right. I saw it because of the tree and the background reminds me of Cuba. So I said it has to be Florida. Um just because it looks like that. Doesn't look like Massachusetts where they're from. Right. I'm looking at the chat now to catch up. It's Amy came in. So hello, Amy. Thank you for coming in and saying hello. Amy. Hello, Amy. Hi, Amy. Where have you been? <laughs> uh, Megan says we have lost all but my mom's mom. As far as grandparents, she's slipping a lot and doesn't recognize me anymore. Yeah, that's the beginning of that. That's when they, you know, they move. Yeah, it's tough. My mom fell down and she wouldn't call anybody to help her and all that. And we had to go, you know, check on her and find her laying on the ground, all that. Uh, Vanessa says, this year, one of my dogs passed away in February. My Dobie. Got sick last week and I had so much faith. I prayed so much and he still passed. I was crushed and hurt and confused. Well, let me speak to that. Um, um, prayer changes things, but it doesn't always change the way we want it. Um, you know, like I spoke before, we're born and we're all going to die. Animals. That's true. Yeah. You know, we're going to die. And and God, we're, God is not a genie. And I'm doing this like I'm rubbing a bottle going, God, <laughs> do exactly what I say, God, or you're not a good God. Because our parents, you know, didn't give us everything we wanted as kids. And I say that flippantly. And I mean it with the most respect I can share. Um, that a, a God is not our genie. We are subordinates to God. He's in charge. We're not. So uh, we have to we have to reverence him as there's a reason and it's a good reason. And it's out of my realm of understanding why these happen besides that we have a fallen world that's full of evil. Uh, and, and we were put here. We were put here from the cradle to the grave. It's that yeah. simple. It ha it's, yeah. it's simple. It, it, everything is simple. Mm -hmm. and, and man and, just makes it complicated. Mm -hmm. And Vanessa says last week when my doom passed, was the first time I questioned God. I didn't understand if I prayed. Well, yeah. What? God doesn't answer every prayer in the way we want it. It just doesn't, you know. And I had a niece. I had a niece that was told that, you know, pray this and God will, God's going to bring your husband back. If you pray this, you do this, you do that. God's going to bring your husband back. Well, he's not God. The pastor's not God. The priest's not God. So you can't speak for God. So, she did everything the priest said, but her husband didn't come back, broke her spirit, broke her relationship with God. So we cannot, we cannot act like God, if I obey you, you're going to give me what I want. No, because guess what? You cannot earn God's love and you cannot make God hate you, no matter what you behave, how you behave. You cannot become more lovable to God and he's not going to hate you no matter how bad you are. It's like a child and a parent. I have a child, no matter what he does, I'm going to love him, but there's consequences to your behavior. You know, there's consequences to this fallen world. There's bad things happen to good people and good things happen to bad people. The Bible says, I let the rain fall on the just and the unjust. They all get blessings from me. So who are we to question God? He created us. We're not God. We don't know better than him. He knows better than us. And it doesn't feel good. It certainly doesn't feel good to hear that. But if we don't understand that he's not a genie and he obeys our command, we're supposed to obey his command. And not everything falls into place. It just doesn't. And it's beyond our realm of understanding. Absolutely. Megan says, that most definitely true. with dad, it was kind of like we had his funeral in the hospital before he died. Uh, two to three days of visit. That, I mean, that's cool. That is cool. That is cool. 
<clears throat> yeah, we all had closure. Yeah, I was ready for my mom to pass. A, probably a year before she passed, I prayed that in front of her. Mom, you can go anytime you want. We, you've done everything you can do for us. You loved us. You loved your grandchildren. You've loved everybody. They, we all love you. It's okay. You don't have to suffer in that body anymore. Go be free. You know, go be free. So I was yeah. ready for that. Oh, my mom always says, oh, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. Take me. You know, she I say that right. I say that today. I'm ready to go. I don't want to be here. Heaven's much better than this place. Exactly. exactly. Oh, I've prayed for it a few times. Say, Lord, you can take me now. Right. I'm ready whenever you are. <laughs> but only God knows when when He wants you. Right. Right. That's true. Yeah. So, you know, it's great that you guys are hanging out and we get love on each other. That's so cool. Rock it, baby. We are rocking it. Yeah. <laughs> You have to have a good attitude in life. You can't let nothing. True. Oh, so much heartache that I've gone through in my life. I just, you know, I was the one that was always saying, I want wings so that I can fly. And as soon as I got my driver's license, boom, I was out. And I know my grandma saw me and, and she was the one telling everybody, just let her let. I was 16. And my grandma said, just let her go and find her life. We don't know mm -hmm. what she's going through because of the trauma that I went through about my dad's death. He was only 33, you know, and I was 15. So that, you know, she just let me go. She knew I needed to just find my life. Mm -hmm. And boy, mm -hmm. I just loved it. I would jam the music, like Stairway to Heaven was on my, my car radio. And I see the sunset going towards Santa Monica Beach. Mm -hmm. And I was just driving it just in a daze. Didn't even pay attention to my driving just in a daze. Just, you know, it was tough at that time in my life. But since then till now, the healing process, this is why I have my channel called Weep the Wild Winds. Because good times, bad times, happy times, sad times, your whole life. And so far, that that's how I express myself with it. And there's a lot more to learn until I, until they drag me to the grave, because I'm going to be going kicking and screaming. Megan says, Grandma is in a nursing home now. She was having a lot of trouble getting around the house, and the guys still had to go get chores done and stuff, so they couldn't be with her 24-7. Yeah, uh, um, when my mom was in a assisted living, COVID hit, and guess what? We couldn't go see her. Right. Um, Let me tell you what the blessing was. Here was the blessing. Um, they said you can come visit her. After, this was after, I don't know, six, eight months, ten months. Like, when are we going to get to see her mom? So they said, well, you can come visit her, but we got to test you for COVID. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, okay, let's go. So I go in. They test me for COVID. And uh, they said, you're good. And they let me go in. I go see my mom. She's looking really bad. I'm holding her hand. I give her kisses. I'm singing to her, all that. And she died an hour after I left. And wow. my Yeah. And my I got to see her that day. My daughter came in and was holding her hand when she passed. So what a blessing. Right. She felt peace. She felt at peace. Mm -hmm. She can go. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, we gotta we need to wrap this up. I gotta go to bed and go to Epcot in the morning. Yahoo! <laughs> I hope you have a great time and eat all the good stuff there. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. I just I hope it doesn't rain too much. Oh uh, yeah, well, isn't you know? this uh tasting stuff indoors a tent? Not all of it, no. No. Oh, oh, okay. There are booths. There are little booths outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're not inside. So. Uh, good luck to that. But I'm, I'm excited for you. Absolutely. Mm, thank you. Thank you. So, you know, you guys have been awesome. This has been like crazy. I'm mm -hmm. gonna wear out my streamyard hours. 
really bad. <laughs> but the good thing is um, I got Restream if I need to. So uh, we'll be able to continue lives with Restream. Well, uh, you said so that your tomorrow would be your last Saturday night live. And if, you know, if you could do it over there in Disney World or wherever or not, then don't say never. Don't say this is your last one. Maybe you'll have another one on a Saturday night. You never know. You never know. I, I might do it on my way home. The good thing about StreamYard is if I have one minute left before I start the live, it will let me do the live however long. As long as I stay streaming, it won't cut me off. Oh, far out. Yeah. So... Let's see here. Megan has something. She said, just learn to dance in the rain and eat like you work in a kitchen. Right on. And then yeah. she said, Robert, I don't I don't want to spend much money, but someone did just say they got the $10 a month by emailing them this week. Hmm. Well, that's Hmm, I'm not sure what that means. Timmy wants me to read his comment. Well, the the comments are there for everybody to read. So if they want to read them, they can read them. Uh, I'm going to tell you this this is a true story. This happened to me and my family when my uncle passed in 07. We was take my uncle to the graveyard, me, my cousin, and out in the clouds. Okay. Wow. Uh, that was a Black Friday thing last year, but they are apparently letting people have the pricing if they email. Um, what's the pricing for? Going Green Mom, I heard someone got it for $10 a month, but all I could see was $20 a month. And what is that monthly rate covering? What are you paying for? Oh, StreamYard. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I don't need to spend even $10 a month. I mean, if I can get it for free, I'm not going to spend $10. That's I did that Black Friday back in the when I was in my twenties or thirties and I, I didn't appreciate it. Well, they're talking about getting stream yard for $10 a month. Oh, 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 I'm yeah. cyber on cyber Monday. Or? I don't know when, but Oh, okay. I get, I get it for free, so I'm not going to pay for it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not, a, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to decrease my, my streaming time anyway. I don't need, I don't need minutes. What I need is subscribers, and I don't need it. I'm just saying that's what I'm lacking. You know, it's not a big deal to me. You know, I'm not in a hurry. I'm in it for the long run. So I'm not in a feel like I'm in a crunch to get subscribers or minutes. I'm good. I'm just enjoying your company because I wouldn't be up here unless I was enjoying your company. True. <laughs> you know, so I'm not I don't right. do I don't do Black Friday. Well, what I'm saying is I wouldn't be doing a live stream unless I enjoyed doing it. I, I, otherwise, I'd be going, all right, guys, you do the talking. I'll just sit here or whatever. I don't you know, want to say anything. Last night, <laughs> G, G came on live all of a sudden, and he was only going to do one hour, short one. So, of course, Kenny's up there, and they, we were on for a long time, and Kenny kept saying, okay, Kenny, I'm going to go to – I'm gonna." You know, shut it down now. I'm going to go to bed. I'm really tired, blah, blah, blah. And Kenny would ask him a question. Uh, and a question. Yeah. And a question. And he would not. <laughs> he couldn't get off. He couldn't close it down. And I said, pull the batteries out of Kenny. He's an energized buddy <laughs> right now. My goodness. <laughs> you have to do something with that guy. He was a, a diehard. Couldn't. <laughs> it was hilarious. Yeah. Well, I'm not I'm not a uh, night owl. I love staying up late. Don't get me wrong, but I got to get up and do something in the morning. If I didn't have to get up and do anything, uh, yeah. You know, but I got to get saying. up. 
camping with Kenny like you wanted to do, watch out. He'll do an all-nighter. <laughs> well, I got to – I figured I need to leave here. If I want to get there at opening, I need to leave here around 8.30. In the morning. Are they cooking breakfast at 8.30? Are they going to just start serving at a certain time? Anything they want? Or what? what's going on? Um, I would think most of it's at 11. Okay. So they'll open the park at 10, but they won't open up the booths till 11. Gotcha, gotcha. So you can go ride like a ride or, or whatever. Uh, okay. You know, because there are rides there. But and is there long lines at the food the food festival? No, they move really fast. Cool, groovy yeah, baby. There's a, there's a lot of booths. Good. And they're spread out all over, you know, so there's a lot of property between everybody to go check out uh, different oh. uh, foods. So there's usually not a long line. Um and the lines move really fast. I mean, they're really fast. So they're like you know, you tell the lady what you want at the cash register and she rips up a receipt, gives it to you. You walk over there and there's probably maybe two or three people in front of you, maybe at worst. And then it's like, boom, because they all it's all pre there's you can't order more than two or three types of things. So you either got this, this or that. So they don't have to like cheeseburger, hot dog, chili dog, french fry. You know, you don't get that option. You only got three choices, basically, you know, Good. at every booth. And it's it's Pepsi or water or whatever. It's Ew, not Pepsi or Coke, Coke oh, and water. Yeah, yeah. Coke, 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 no Pepsi at Disney. No Pepsi. She's better go ahead. I don't no drink Pepsi. Neither. <laughs> I don't drink Pepsi or Coke. <laughs> All right. Well, let's see here. It's two a.m. Robert. I know. Vanessa said, uh -huh. "Whatever that means." High five. High ten. I don't know what that means. All right. Do you want I'm me to not drop sure either. I only have a 11. It's almost 12 o'clock for me. Mm -hmm. What time is it over here? Uh, 1049, I see. Yeah, 1049. Yeah, for me, it's 149. And I have 1149. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. Everybody who was watching and commenting and everything, thank you so much. This was just a pop-up live. And look how long it lasted. Everybody, <laughs> blessings to you guys, and go out and rock your world, even if it's just opening a, a can of Coke or whatever, and uh, just be good humans. Be good on each other. Thank you. Love Thank each you. other. Yeah. All right. Hopefully, I'll pop weekend. Up. Maybe I'll pop up tomorrow night, maybe. We'll Far see out. you guys later. Bye, everybody. All right. All right. Bye-bye.